Today on Nesson's coverage of New England College Lacrosse, it's Syracuse against UMass. Coach Roy Simmons Jr. and his Orange men are on a rampage. They've won 10 straight. Last Saturday, Syracuse destroyed ninth-ranked Penn 22 to 1. Starting goalie Matt Palum shut out the Quakers in his 30 minutes of action, while the Orange men's Canadian connection comprised of the Gate brothers Paul and Gary, and freshman Tom Marajek accounted for nine of the team's 22 goals. The three have now combined for 102 goals on the season. Coach Dick Garber's Minutemen are red hot as well. They've won nine in a row for a 12-1 record. Their explosive offense is powered by sophomore sensation Jim McAlevey, who has 66 points, while the defense is held together by senior goalkeeper Sal Lacasio, who in his last three games has a gaudy 74.2 save percentage. It's number two Syracuse versus number six UMass next. Third down and a yard. De Janeiro lost the ball for Antrim. He's got it. Touchdown. Time, perhaps. Carmine scores. I think Greg Fisk might have tipped that in. I'm not sure. We got a tie ball game right now, and the fans are going crazy. Championships. Welcome to Alumni Stadium on the campus of the University of Massachusetts as Nesson presents exclusive coverage of New England College Lacrosse. Today, the number two Syracuse Orangemen meet the number six UMass Minutemen. Today's game is brought to you by Brine Lacrosse Equipment, the choice of champions. Ask for Brine. Hi everybody, Doug Brown for Nesson's New England College Lacrosse coverage. This is our last telecast of the regular season and we saved a beauty for the final day of the regular season. And welcome to Alumni Stadium in Amherst, Massachusetts. We've got uh, kind of a cloudy day, it's overcast. We've had intermittent rain throughout the morning and overnight prior to today. And uh, so the field conditions will certainly be something worth chatting about as we continue. I'm joined by former UNH All-American Steve Glover and General Manager of the New England Blazers, Steve August. And we're gonna talk first of all about the Syracuse Orangemen with Steve Glover. Steve, uh, this Syracuse team, a lot has been said and written about them already. I don't know what more you can say. They are very, very strong. They are ranked number two, but only by a fluke in the schedule, perhaps. And let's talk about the guys who put it in the net for uh, Syracuse. They have so many who can do it. First of all, John Zoberti. The Z-Man, he's not going to have his trademark orange sneakers today because it's as it's rained last night and it feels very wet and slippery, so he'll have his cleats on. Z-Man, last game against Penn, he had four goals to put him over the 100 goal mark in his career. He stands third for uh, assists and total points in Syracuse all-time this year. He's got 23 goals, 41 assists for 64 points. He's the quarterback. He's the go-to guy. He'll carry the ball for Syracuse. One word that's always used about Syracuse, uh, particularly this season, is depth. And from the 1988 National Championship team, believe it or not, one of the starting attackmen from last year isn't even in the starting lineup anymore because of a young freshman named Tom Marichek. He's only a freshman, but Marichek has it all. He might not say he might not have a left hand, though. He's all righty, but... He's got the behind the back shot and pass equal way. He's very good with the stick around the goal. He's the finisher. He's got 36 goals. He's only a freshman. Ever since the start of the season, everybody's been talking about Syracuse. So we remember it way back to the beginning of the year when we were at Brown to watch this team play. They had that early season loss. Since then, they've really been on a mission. Yeah, they lost to Hopkins 14-13. to That was their first game, their only loss. Uh, they may be looking past UMass towards the tournament, but during their warm-ups, they were very fired up. They're going to be ready today. All right, let's turn it over now to Steve August and chat a little bit about these homestanding UMass Minutemen. They are also playing very, very well with a long winning streak on the line. And Steve, uh, again on the offense for UMass, uh, they may try and play it a little differently today, but let's talk about one guy who's been playing very well of late, and that's Paul Gale. Yeah, many coaches around the country think Paul Gancy may be one of the most underrated attackmen. He's very good. He's got a great change of direction. He's been scoring an awful lot for UMass, and he compliments Hiller and McAlevey quite well. So uh, Gancy, Gancy's a guy to look out for. The goalkeeper for UMass, as always, of course, is the multi-time All-American Sal Lacasio, but he'll need some help out in front today, and he'll look to uh, his defenseman. One of those will be Adam Rodell. Well, as we said when uh, UMass played Harvard, the defense has been a little bit in question at times, but, you know, those are some good athletes back there, and Adam Rodell is one of the best. He's going to probably cover Greg Burns for Syracuse, and as Gloves uh, alluded to, the balance of the Syracuse attack, 
Rodell is going to have to do a job on Burns because anyone could open up the floodgates for, for Cusin any time. Two of the top teams in the country. They'll both be heading to the NCAA tournament in less than two weeks, but this is going to be a dandy here today. The sun has broken through in Amherst. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening face-off. Syracuse and UMass, don't go away. Doug Brown with Steve Glover and Steve August, and welcome back to Alumni Stadium on the campus of the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. The sun is breaking through, and it looks like we may get this game in without any further rain, and I'm sure that'll make uh, both teams happy, although most particularly it'll make Syracuse happy. Let's talk uh, about a couple of things briefly to set this up for you. First of all, these teams uh, have met a total of 13 times. It's been a long time since UMass has won back in the early 80s. That score from last year was at the Carrier Dome. Two years ago, the last time the teams met here, Syracuse won that one 17 to 11 in front of a crowd of 11,000 people. I don't think we'll have quite that many here today. The keys to success for the two teams. Steve August, uh, watch your step for Syracuse. They are the team that could most be affected by a slick field, and it is a little slick even still. Well, Syracuse is a very fast team, and they rely on their speed. And Steve Glover and I were out checking the crease areas, and it's incredibly slick out there. There's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding. Also for Syracuse, finish with a kick, meaning just keep the momentum going. They have been just on an incredible roll since that opening game loss. Well, it's been said they can't look past UMass to the playoffs quite yet. For UMass, well, this is something that Dick Garber's been very concerned about. Face-off finesse. Well, Dick needs to control the face-offs in order to get possession of the ball, and Syracuse is an awful big obstacle in that regard. Much of Syracuse's offense will start off a of one face-off. In fact, in, against Penn, their last game, Syracuse at one point held the ball for 17 minutes. They kept winning all the face-offs. And also for UMass, relax, just do it. Maybe pretend this is just another game. Just go out and play. Well, it is just another game. There's really no pressure on UMass in this game. Their um, standing isn't really jeopardized by a, by a loss here. The starting lineups, first of all for Syracuse, John Zoberti, Greg Burns, and Tom Marichek on the attack. The Gate brothers, Paul and Gary, and Rodney Dumpson, who's also a pretty fair midfielder out there. Starting defense, Jim McNamara, Pat McCabe, and Mark Stouffer. And in goal, Matt Palem. He's also an outstanding uh, goalkeeper. For UMass, on the attack, Scott Hiller, Paul Gancy, and Jim McAlevey. Greg Collins, Rich Senator, and Tim Sudan are the middies. Tom Bonet, Adam Rodell, and the freshman Rich Mullins on defense. And the three-time All-American Sal Lucasio in goal. And talking about UMass, uh, Augie, the, really what's at stake here perhaps is a top four seed among the 12 teams going to the NCAA tournament. The team that wins this game should have a bye into the quarterfinals. Oh, absolutely. And I would even say that if uh, UMass plays well, they might even puncture the top four and they would receive a bye. They're going to probably have a home home uh, playoff game regardless of the outcome of this game. And, of course, uh, UMass, uh, perhaps, regardless of what happens in this one, even if they were to lose, could still get a home game in that first round. Yes, if they come, if they come in with the, in the top eight, they'll have a home game here at UMass. So they're going to have to stay close to Syracuse. All right, here we go. We're about set for the opening faceoff. Uh, Dick Garber, the UMass coach, has dressed a couple of new players, new to the roster this year, specifically for face-offs. But on this first one, it's Josh Schimmel for UMass and Kirk Pratt, the regular face-off man for Syracuse. And UMass quickly goes on the attack, so right off the opening draw, they handle that first face-off very well. They did not let Syracuse uh, muscle it and get it on offense. This is Paul Gancy, number 11, now to Jim McAlevey. McAlevey is being watched by Jim McNamara. We'll be keeping an eye on some of the matchups here. That could be important as the day wears on. Boy, the Syracuse defense really goes right after him. We saw Syracuse earlier in the year here on Nesson in a win over Brown, a game that was quite close for a while. The Minutemen turn it over. Back come the Orange men. This is Gary Gate. Scored 70 goals last season for the Orangemen. Gate works to the middle and fires, and Lucasio got a piece of that. This field is really heavy, and the ball really stopping behind the cage. 
That could hurt UMass, uh, particularly if Syracuse keeps the ball. What UMass wants to do is they want to keep the ball. They want to keep it away from the Gate Brothers. This is Rodney Dumpson. Back for Zilberti. And over intended for Gary Gate and a bad pass goes over the sideline. It will go to UMass. Going out of bounds, going to be UMass ball. UMass right now, they want to, talking to a couple of plays before the game, they want to control the tempo. You see Dick Garber, he does too. They want to control the tempo, control the ball, because when they have the ball, Syracuse doesn't. Yeah, I guess it's the most fundamental rule on offense in any sport, but it's particularly uh, applicable here in this one because if Syracuse controls the ball for long periods of time, they can just be devastating, as was evidenced in that game against Penn last weekend. And well, there's a tough ride there by Syracuse, and it'll be orange ball. And Syracuse was using a 10-man ride there. They pull a goalie out of the cage down at the other end and try to force UMass into a bad pass, which you just saw. I mean, they had a guy right on on the, uh, the clearing defensemen and midfielders. UMass is going to have to adjust to that. It was Greg Burns who forced the turnover that time. Maracek now for Dumpson. Finds Paul Gate, and Paul gets a little opening and scores! Paul Gate, the first goal of the game, two minutes and four seconds in, Syracuse leads 1-0. You see Paul Gate just taking it strong with the left hand, just sweeping by, showing some speed for a big guy. Just speed right by and watch it up top. Gate's going to be coming in, he's going to get the pass from Dobson. Here's Gate. Now Gate's just going to... He's just going to take him strong. Just keeps running. Get that stick in the left hand. That's a nice 10-yard shot. Beats Sal, short side. That'll be unassisted for Paul Gate. And it will be his 28th goal of the season. He is third on the team in that department behind his brother Gary and Tom Marachek. And Syracuse wins the draw, and they have it back. Zilberti working the point behind the net. This is Marichek. Marichek had an outstanding game against Brown here on Nesson earlier in the year. Could be tough for you, Mask Gloves, if uh, Syracuse continues to hold the ball like this. Well, they have so many hits. Moving the ball. That Syracuse has a lot of conferences offsides on Syracuse. Yep, just a half a step offside was Jim McNamara at the midfield line. It will go to UMass. People still coming in here to Alumni Stadium, an enthusiastic crowd, and with the weather beginning to clear, perhaps uh, some more folks will continue to come in. Absolutely. It's filling up on the far side, right below us. There's a pretty good crowd. How about that stat? 26 of their last 27 regular season games. The loss to Hopkins to start this season, the only blemish. That's over two years. Here you see Gancy with the ball. And now a loose ball. Gancy cannot get there, and it's picked up by the Orangemen. There you see the slippery field. Very slick down on that end. Pat McCabe gets it, <laughs> gets it over to Palem and out. Showing some stick work. McCabe looked like an attackman out there with that stick. This yes. is Phil Schluter with the long stick. And to Paul Gate, and his shot goes wide. A nice rush by Schluter and a good dump-off pass to Paul Gate looking for his second goal. Shows you how quick, how quick Syracuse can start an offense. Here it comes. Here comes Schluter. Schluter's going to find Gate cutting across the middle. Gates, has, that's where he wants to shoot it. Lefty Ooh. just misses wide. Here's Z-Man. In front is checked. The ball picked up momentarily and now batted away. Good tough play from both teams so far. No penalties have been called and a turnover by Syracuse. That's the third turnover by Syracuse right there. One for UMass on the ride. Greg Burns unable to hang on to it toward the end line. We played about three and a half minutes in the first quarter here at Amherst. It's one nothing Syracuse. So Syracuse has so much confidence in their stick work. They all have such great sticks. They're just fl letting that ball fly around. Sports and they've had, like you say, three turnovers already. The reason they have turnovers is because they're just letting it fly. Those passes they make are almost as fast as a lot oh, yeah. of team shots. Absolutely. Here's a 10-man ride. No one's open. They're putting pressure on this, and UMass is going to have to adjust. Adam Rodell trying to bail out. He finally does. Gets it up to Tim Sudan. And Sudan will take it himself. He's hit. 
stays with it as he's hammer hammered by Steve Scaramazzino. Boy, Syracuse plays a tacky defense, don't they, Gloves? All over the field. They'll take you from the, from the box, not just inside the box, but all the way up to the midfield line. They'll be on you. This is Rich Senator, number 21. Now to Greg Collins, number eight. It's going to be tough to dodge right down to that end of the field. You can see the area right in front of the net there is very worn because of the footwork and also because of the recent rain. UMass should go to a cutter offense right here instead of this dodging stuff. Here's Sudan getting a little opening. Tried to dump off a pass to Collins. That didn't work. And the Orangemen kick it upfield. And unable to save it is John Zilberti as it went off the foot of Steve Scaramazzino and over the sideline. Don't you agree, Gloves? I think uh, UMass needs to get some kind of cutter system going there because uh, dodging in that slick turf is going to be tough. Dodge is going to be tough. It definitely an advantage definitely goes to the to the offensive team, but like I say, cutting a cutting offense right now would work pretty well. UMass with it again. Up the middle, it's Senator. Long pass, beautiful save by Gansey. Now for McAlevey. In front, Sudan can't handle the ball. That was the idea, though. Palem, the outlet is too far. Out near midfield, there'll be a scramble. It's picked up by Rob Persing, but we have a whistle. And we have a push against Syracuse off the ball. No possession, so it'll go to UMass. Bruce no penalty. Crawford making that call. Bruce Crawford also working with David, Dave Leet and Rob Patterson. Rob Patterson on exchange from the Texas area, Fort Worth, Texas. I thought it was lot, Katie. They play a lot of lacrosse in <laughs> Texas, do they? The Lone Star State. Scott Hiller looking for position. Gets it off for Chris Tyler. Now for John Gonzalez. You know, you, UMass would like to see Hiller get into the scoring early. When he scores early, he has his best games. We saw him score eight against Brown. Just does a lot for his confidence. Tyler trying to cut. You can see the footing difficult in front. Gansey shot a save by Palem. That's the kind of cuts UMass has to make. Best chance so far for the Minutemen, Paul Gansey right out front. Persing, cross midfield. This is Scaramazzino with the long stick in front and a score. Scaramazzino sets it up for Greg Burns and it's 2-0 Syracuse. Scaramazzino, you gotta watch out for him because he's, he's a defenseman, number 23. Defenseman has seven goals so he can shoot it. But you saw him there make the pass to Burns. Here's, here it comes, Scaramazzino. Scaramazzino's gonna get the pass right here. And when he brings it down, he's a threat to score. Defense got to slide, he's gonna find Burns in the middle. Burns watches, catches it one hand, backhand. That's a tough shot to stop. Second slide was a little late there too. Goal number 19 on the season for Greg Burns and it's two nothing Orange Men. And you see how quickly Syracuse can scoop the ball and get right back into the offense as Kirk Pratt does everything. He wins the face off and got the loose ball. And of course, if Pratt doesn't pick it up, the Gate brothers are on the outside to come in and try and get it. Behind the net, Zoberti in front. And a beautiful stop by Lacasio as Burns was looking for another quick one. What a pass by Zoberti. Threading the needle right across the crease area. A lot of sticks. Pass made. It was a nice pass. This is Marichek. He doesn't have much room. Eric Mensch on him, but he scores anyway. <laughs> Tom Marichek just working and working and working against Eric Mensch, and it's 3-0 Orange Men. Just posted him up on that one. Jeez, Marichek with the stick work. Watch the stick work on the replay. Marichek, he's all right. And he want, he's got that stick. Look at he's keeping it away. He's playing his box game. Mensch, what's Mensch going to do with him? And then he just turns. You see a little lefty shot. We That's talked right. about him being all righty. <laughs> he proved me wrong right there. Three nothing Syracuse. I'll tell you, you know what UMass has to be careful of? Down on the end of the field where Syracuse is running its offense, it's a little easier to run its offense, but they could find themselves, UMass could find themselves so far behind at the end of one quarter before they get a shot down there, they could be in trouble. Yeah, you're right. It's a lot drier down in the Syracuse offensive end. Which you don't see when uh, Syracuse is going on offense, you don't see him falling down as much. Every right. time we've been down the other side, you see a lot of UMass guys going to the cage, falling Absolutely. down, getting the stick checked away. What they probably should do is just pull it out, air out the ball a little bit while they're on offense in the slick slide side just to keep the ball away from Syracuse. But you see Syracuse is really attacking them defensively. After another foul with no possession, it goes to UMass. 
This is McAlevey. Flips it up top. Jim Bergen. Behind the net for McAlevey. Tried the give and go to Bergan out front. It did not work, and Palem covers it. Palem dumps it off. Jim McNamara. And now Palem tries the middle, and the ball just, you can see, really sticking in the heavy. Oh, it's very thick down there. Halfway through the first quarter, 3 0 Syracuse. The goal scorers, Paul Gate, Greg Burns, and Tom Marachek. UMass in a drop back zone ride, allowing Syracuse to just walk it up the field here. Because it's so slick, it's tough to ride down there. Palem now pressured a little bit. Gets rid of it to Earl Hall. And now UMass turns up the ride, and oh. what a crunching hit! Oh, what a hit that was on Freddie Amaya. Scott Hiller trying to pick up the loose ball. He cannot. All of a sudden, UMass just turned a very passive ride into something very aggressive, and they're keeping the pressure on and really getting the fans into it here. The ball goes back to Palem. Didn't pick up the UMass player who threw that hit, but perhaps we'll get it later. Zoberti behind the net, in front, spins and scores! John Zoberti! So much for UMass gaining any momentum. As you saw the hit, got everybody going. There he goes, Mensch that had that hit. And as you saw, not too happy with that. Zoe Birdie coming around the cage, doing a little dance right on the crease. Here we'll see it develop and watch Zoe Birdie coming around from behind. Here he gets it, showing you the speed he has. You see how dry it is, right around the corner. One on one, look at it, and doesn't get hit. That's I think what Sal was a little bit upset about. Absolutely, it's a breakdown on uh, UMass's transition defense right here. You can't have this one, the guys point behind. Get point, beaten like that. Point behind, just walking around. Well, the other thing, back to uh, comments about the ride. You know, that, that ride, I mean, it looks passive, but the trap, it's like a, it's a half court trap in basketball. You know, because they don't want to put the pressure on the slick end of the field where they might slip and then, you know, take themselves out of the ride, what they're doing is dropping back to the midfield, get the trap, that's how that hit came about. Get the trap right at midfield when UMass get, uh, when uh, Syracuse tries to clear the ball. You saw seven consecutive losses for UMass against Syracuse since 1981, and they find themselves in a 4 nothing hole here early. Some of the crowd that's come over to Alumni Stadium, of course, home games here at UMass ordinarily played at the very intimate Boyden Field, but today's game being played here at the stadium to accommodate more fans. Some interesting uh, scores here. Even against Brown, and the other two, the other against Cornell and Rutgers, Syracuse pretty much crushed both of those teams. The uh, Cornell score was actually 12-11. Uh, right, for UMass, yeah. Uh, for Cornell against right, UMass. Right, against it was UMass. a loss, but uh, it was 12-11. And that's the only thing standing uh, in between UMass and a perfect season to this point. It's Coach Garber. UMass has to get back some of that momentum after that hit. Crowd went crazy, unfortunately, for UMass. Zil Birdie for Syracuse came right back. And Kirk Pratt again wins another faceoff and scoops it. It's like instantaneous for him. Pratt leaves the field now. Rodney Dumpson comes out. Paul Gate having a problem in front. But he gets rid of it. And here's Marichek spinning and firing wide. I'll tell you, UMass's defense is oversliding right now. They're just uh, too aggressive. They're just getting themselves out of position. And that's playing right into Syracuse's hands. Especially with Syracuse here, you see Marichek's going to come out for a rest. With the stick work that Syracuse possesses, it's going to be dangerous if you slide too quick. They'll just move that ball to the next open man. In front, a long shot and a score for Gary Gate. Oh, he was 20 yards out when he took that one. <laughs> Takes the ball on his right hand, turns it back over to the left and just lets it fly high and hard. Here we go, gate to gate. Open up the floodgates. Watch Gate. He's catching it on his right. He turns to his left, and he's just going to let it fly. He wants that shot. Nice overhand right over the shoulder. A lot of steam on that shot. Yep, nothing Sal can do about that one. Well, you know, sorry, Doug. You know, uh, Syracuse was ahead of 
Penn, which is a ranked team, they're a top 15 team. They were ahead of Penn 20 to nothing before Penn mustered a goal. Huh? And Temper's getting a little short. That penalty flag may be against Syracuse for the retaliation. A little extracurriculars. UMass does not want to go man down, but it's going to go against Gate. I think you called it right, Doug, there. A little retaliation. Well, did we say something about Syracuse's offense being well balanced? That's five goals, five different goal scorers. Jeez. Over there, coach. Gonna get way out of control. Pick up some of the conversation from the sideline. Remotion's running a little high. Well, UMass is going to go to the extra man here for the first time in the game. Sure do need a goal, don't you think, Loves? Momentum. They need they need some, some confidence builder. 6.01 left to go in the first quarter. That goal, by the way, for Gary Gate was his 40th of the season. He leads the team in that department. He had 70 last year, remember. Trying to straighten out the penalty call now. No, I think there's a UMass team. penalty also on uh, Mario Lopez, I believe. You see Bruce Crawford. This looks like the MILL. Take forever to make the call. How <laughs> <laughs> to make the call. Here's a look at the table. White ball. This is We still don't have an explanation. How are we asking for an explanation? White ball. No, but someone down on the Syracuse bench wants an explanation. It's the assistant coach. Well, it's simultaneous Jessica. fouls. It's simultaneous fouls. UMass had possession. Equal time. Both teams serve in the box, but the ball retains uh, is retained in possession of UMass. You see Coach Desco, assistant coach for Syracuse. Brother Dave plays for the New England Blades as well as the Brian Lacrosse Club. Simultaneous. 30 seconds simultaneous penalties apparently is the call. Good call, Augie. And it will be Mario Lopez for UMass and Gary Gate for Syracuse in the penalty box. Tim Sudan will start with the ball up, up top. Two, three, four, five will be five on five. Give UMass just a little bit extra space. And look where Syracuse is picking up Sudan. All the way out to the midfield line. If he gets the ball in the uh, box. Scaramazzino. He's, UMass will go man up. He's got good speed, so he figures he can run with Sudan. Sudan should try to take him right there. Oh, there he goes. And he does. So now it's a five on four momentarily. Sudan out front, and the shot goes wide. A great chance for Greg Collins on the crease. So good, idea for, that one. good idea for Sudan. Beat his man and then made not the feed. Now to look at that, Sudan uh, just used the wheels, got by him. Actually, uh, Scarazzino got a piece of that. And um, Collins picked up the ground ball and fired it wide. He had a goal. 20 seconds left to go on those 30 second penalties. McAlevey flips it out front. Mike Kane, the freshman for Sudan. Now for McAlevey. It's McAlevey, Hiller, Collins, Kane, and Sudan right now for UMass. All even, six on six. And Rob Cotignato comes onto the field for the first time for UMass. Flag down. Cotignato has it. First time he's been out there, he's been hurt, and Hiller. I don't know what the call is. We'll take a look here for you. The whistle was blown, apparently. It's against Syracuse. It is. Okay, he's got now 30 seconds for the one he had left and 30 seconds more. The simultaneous foul situation, the sim simultaneous foul situation was 30 seconds for UMass, one minute for Syracuse, and they both released at 30 seconds, ah. um, giving um, so that Syrac Syracuse an additional penalty for getting on the field too early. So UMass now is, in fact, on the extra man, and that's why Rob Cotignato came on the field. Cotignato... Uh, after the Rutgers game, the night of the Rutgers game, uh, suffered a hematoma in his right calf, uh, popped a blood vessel, had a lot of pain, and it was somewhat in question whether he'd play at all today, but then the late word we got was that he would certainly at least give it a try on extra man situations. Well, man enough, because you need his stick. He's a smart, heady player. Knows what to do with the ball. And he's been playing very well lately, too. He's scored a lot of goals. As you look at Scott Hiller. Well, we saw him with the big overtime. Overtime go 99 career goals at UMass. We'll be looking for that hundredth today. 
Like to get it as quick as possible. Still trying to get the manpower situation straightened out down at the oh. table. 5.17 left to go in the first this quarter. This is too well, bad. The, this the, is just too bad. The penalties were called with 6.01 to go in the quarter, so theoretically we should be 14 seconds into the UMass extra man, but they may reset that and no. have it start fresh the, with a minute now. No, what will happen is they'll, they'll get a uh, full minute extra penalty tagged on. So you'll have uh, 30 seconds that was left plus another minute you have a minute 30 extra man situation that's releasable. If the refs would make the call and get the game on, I think everybody would appreciate it. <laughs> well, one thing is for certain, UMass is going to be on an extra man situation here. And they are in desperate need of getting on the scoreboard. I'll tell you, not everybody on the UMass bench is happy about this either. Apparently with the way the, the call was structured, but in any event, here we go. Sudan flips it behind the net for McAlevey. And McAlevey's pass is knocked down and stolen by Mark oh. Stouffer, but watch out in front. Collins batting at it, and it goes wide, and now Matt Palum will pick it up. Syracuse defenseman hit his own post. He's trying to get it back to Palum. I don't think Palum was ready for it. This, well. of course, killing the extra man. UMass has to go put some pressure on the clear here. Cotignato just came off the field and he he's is limping. certainly in some pain. He's got that right leg wrapped. And of course, when you get off the field in lacrosse, you've got a sprint off and you could really tell that he was feeling it a little bit in that right leg as he came off. Well, this is just going to about take care of the extra man situation for UMass as Palem dumps it off. And Syracuse has it. And watch out. Here comes Dan Cahey. Good ball movement by Syracuse. Now for Zilberti. All even now. Zilberti looking for Gary Gate. There he is. Goes around the screen. Lopez is right with him. Gate. Go around a screen from Brother Paul this time. Gets into the open and fires high. Locasio got a piece of it. That was not good talking defense by UMass right there. I mean, the pick was right. was a stationary pick. Someone should have been able to see it. Yeah, should have been able to see it. Should have called it out. But you saw Gay coming in there with a nice shot. Looked like he was faking low. Watch Gay coming here. He's look, he looks like he's going to underhand it, and then he overhands it in one motion. See, he's coming under and then over. Sal. Big save. Quick hands. Syracuse again, this is Rodney Dumpson with a long distance shot and it's wide. And bounces off the back wall of the stadium. <laughs> Forget about the break gate brothers, you got Dumpson, Zilberti, Marichek. So many burns, so many of these guys can put the ball in the net. Zilberti threw that into a crowd of players out front. And it's finally flipped over the, or toward the sideline. Rodney Dumpson picks it up. 3.15 left to go in the first quarter. Syracuse leads it five to nothing. Dumpson makes a quick move to the outside and fires and scores. Rodney Dumpson. Jeez, I saw him in the in the warm-ups practicing that exact same shot about four times in a row. He hit it right in the bottom corner. Well, there yeah. you've seen him go far side. The other thing right there is uh, he just beat the short stick midi. Adam Rodelli beat, in fact. He's strong. Dumpson taking it strong. Look, he's quick. He's going to be shooting off hip. That's where you're supposed to tucks it away and just gets a nice shot off far side. No, no, it was Riddell had to make the slide. Right, Riddell he, he moved over. Right. Collins, Collins earlier. Greg Collins, right. Well, Riddell, uh, you know, the way you should be playing it, you shouldn't have to make the slide. you got to stay with your own men, and, you know, hopefully you don't get beat one-on-one -on -one too many times. But so far today, he must have been beaten uh, for almost each goal. Rodney Dumpson's 13th goal of the year, and that's six goals for Syracuse, six different goal scorers now in the first quarter. And trying to save it. And unable to do so is Greg Burns as he goes over near the gorilla. <laughs> Just see the gorilla giving him a giving him a mouthful, getting the crowd going. Give a lot of credit to Scott Hiller on that one, checking the stick. Sometimes you say Minutemen in lacrosse circles, and they wonder who you're talking about because they're known as the gorillas. Garbage gorillas. <laughs>
Sal Lacasio way out near the restraining line. We saw Lacasio make a foray down into the attack zone last week against Harvard. And you see him looking things over, the general, going for the long one. Oh, nice pass. For Scott Hiller, and the shot is deflected wide by Palem. McAlevey has it. Desperately needing to get on the board, UMass here. There's a flag, flag down. And he's knocked down again. McAlevey's being manhandled behind the net, and there will be the whistle, as the penalty will be on Jim McNamara. How about Sal Lacasso with that pass? Give him time, he'll dissect you. Dissect your ride. Makes a long pass down to Hiller. Hiller, we've got a nice shot off. Well, that was actually a good play by Sal because of the 10-man ride. Here's the foul you see down at the other end. McAlevey getting a stick right under the chin there. The flag went down right there. McAlevey kept his balance and continued on to the cage, but he dropped the ball. McNamara covering McAlevey. And McNamara goes off for the penalty. Good stats there for McAlevey. 25 goals, 41 assists, 66 points on the year. And McAlevey behind the net as UMass tries to get on the board. Down to two minutes to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Syracuse. Sudan and Kane and Hiller, and they whip it around the outside. Cotignato now for McAlevey. For Cotignato. There it is. In front, Sudan oh. scores! Tim Sudan from Mike Kane, and UMass is on the board. Good patient ball movement by UMass, and, and what they did was they kept it spread out wide, kept it away from the muck in the middle, and uh, moved the ball and forced Syracuse to slide a little bit. Here you see McAlevey starting the extra man, pressing point behind a little bit. See it goes around the perimeter, cutting out. Everybody's out there in the green grass, not in the brown stuff. Around the perimeter, making the defense move, and then Sudan slipped right in there for the point blank shot, got the goal. Good extra man by UMass. Sudan's 27th goal of the year. Kirk Pratt again on the faceoff for Syracuse. Josh Schimmel for the Minutemen, and Syracuse has it. And right back is Pratt for the shot, and a score! Kirk Pratt, who's been just terrific on faceoffs all year for the Orangemen, and that time he was able to scoop it and go right downfield for the score. It's a tough one for UMass, Sal not happy with that. Pratt just bringing it right down off the faceoff. Here you go. I think Gloves will take this replay. Here he comes. You see Gates going to find him. Pratt bringing it down. He gets possession of the ball, and they don't want to slide. They don't want to see. So they just let him keep coming. He just kept coming in. Yeah. Get a nice skip off that mud. That mud just like adds another couple miles an hour. Skips real hard off of it. He did. The UMass defense had not gotten back into their fast break defense to uh, make a make the appropriate slide. Right now, it seems as if SU is just walking through the defense of UMass. And what UMass has to do is start playing more position defense and not getting beat um, in the transition or one-on-one -on -one in order to compensate. UMass turned the ball over there after winning the faceoff, and the guy who took the faceoff for the Minutemen that time was John McEwen, who's a senior dressing in his very first lacrosse game. He's a uh, fine linebacker on the UMass football team. Coach Dick Garber of the Minutemen uh, actually has dressed two players today that have not played before this season. John McEwen and Duncan McRae, both from the football team. McRae is a backup fullback, hoping to get a little more beef, a little more muscle on the faceoffs. And it worked that time at least, but UMass turned it right over. But now they have it again, and McAlevey is with it. For Rich Senator. Senator has some good speed. He should take it up top like Sudan did earlier. UMass may just hold for the rest of the quarter here. 35 seconds remaining in it. Here's Sudan. He's got a short stick. This is a good area for him to work on. He's working on Gary Gate, and Gate covers him well, and he turns it over. Gate showing some speed. And a fake pass. Paul Gate finally flips it over. Steve Scaramazzino, and the shot blocked out front. But turned over and a goal. Lucasio no turned it over, but they're going to wave it off. Lacasio turned it over right into the hands of Tom Marichek, but I believe he was in the crease. It was interfered. Somebody tapped his stick. One of the Syracuse players tapped his stick, which is interference with a goalie while he has possession in the crease, and it, and it popped to, uh, was it Marichek who yeah. stuck it in? Yeah. yeah. But I tell you, watch, it, watch the replay. Lacasio, Lacasio had a midfield. I think it was 
Let's, let's just watch it. Again, no slide, though. Great save by Sal. Okay, flips it. Mullins flips it back to Lacasio. And right there, Scaramazzini. That was interference. Yep. He hit him. Yep. Six seconds. Five. Final seconds of the quarter. Hiller has to hurry. Fires a soft shot in, and Palem gets it. And McAlevey is right over the top of him. And that should be a foul on Palem. McAlevey is pushed from behind by Palem, but. The question is, was Palem out of the crease when McAlevey climbed on top of him? Well, I mean, that's that's a technical infraction of the... I mean, that's not a push. <laughs> I mean... It, was a, be, it should be a free, free clear. Free clear. Be free clear. Here you see Hillis. the last few seconds of the period. Um, Hiller getting off a soft shot. McAlevey trying to just get a rebound. He just By no means uh, tried to pull a stick out of uh, Palem's hand, and <laughs> Palem just gave him a shot behind. That's the end of the first quarter, a very good quarter indeed for the Syracuse Orange men. The second-ranked team in the country leads it 7-1. to one. We'll be back. Seven to one, the Syracuse Orange men lead the UMass Minutemen after one quarter here at Alumni Stadium in Amherst. And I'll tell you, the crowd has continued to flow in during this first quarter. We've got an outstanding crowd here now. Nice shot of the crowd over there. See Both what, sides of the stadium. See what UMass can do now. They're on the dry side offensively. Talk about the Syracuse offense. Seven goals, seven different scores, so they can hurt you. There's no game plan about shutting off one person. If you shut off one, Somebody else will score. Well, Syracuse will have a little more difficulty operating down on the slick side of the field, but on the other hand, um, the transition game could go even more in their favor. Syracuse again on the attack. In front, wide open, a save by Lacasio as he denies Greg Burns right in front. the uh, football linebacker John McEwen on that last faceoff again for UMass. Transition for UMass. Here come the Minutemen. Nice slide and pick up by Mark Feinberg. In front, Hiller, the shot goes wide. A wasted shot. Should have dumped it one more time. Move his feet, move his feet. Good transition by UMass. Missed the opportunity. It's no. Well, <laughs> it's a pretty impressive statistic for Syracuse, not a good one for UMass. I'm sure you could put that stat up for almost every quarter for Syracuse. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. They're, they're pretty good in every quarter. Their uh, combined first half scores through their first 11 games, 114 to 38. Uh, that's an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> now, last time UMass had the situation where Syracuse brought it up in a settled clear, we had that great hit and uh, brought the crowd to life. We'll see if UMass can engineer a good trap ride again. This is Paul Gate getting open and putting a soft pass over the net. Back in front, Gary takes a shot, it's wide. Jeez, they're just playing with the ball. Back and forth, back and forth. Gates, you know, no matter which one you're talking about, they're so strong and fast. Forget about the stick work. They have amazing sticks, but they're just, physical specimens running up and down the field. It's tough to stop them. Rodney Dumpson. Behind the net, Zoberti. Now for Jim Egan. This is Paul Gate. He is hit, and Lacasio scoops the loose ball. So it'll be tougher for you, uh, for Syracuse to yeah, operate down there. Jim Egan, by the way, number nine for Syracuse, is the guy who was replaced in the starting attack from last year's championship team by Tom Marichek, the freshman. That's tough when you start on a national championship team and you get replaced by a freshman. Well, Roy Simmons uh, told me yesterday, he said, Flag Egan, down. Egan knows it. He said Marichek proved himself early in the year, and he has no problem at all with Marichek starting. Sudan in front, and a possible shot for McAlevey goes wide, and there will be the call against Syracuse. Well, UMass goes the extra man for the second time in the game. Be a one-minute slash. Be so called on. a kind of player who can really draw fouls because of his speed. You see him protecting the stick well right there. 
a little quick on that flag, to be frank. Uh, <laughs> you know, that the ref was going to the pocket, you know, after the first tap tap. But Phil uh, Schluter called for the penalty. It's one minute for UMass on the extra man. They have the one extra man goal already, their only goal of the game. Cotignato behind the net for McAlevey. Kane, Sudan. Now on the other side, Hiller. Makes a move in front, a score! Oh, oh. Pretty pass, Hiller to McAlevey. Scotty Hiller. Everybody thinks he's a shooter. There he's shown that he can pass the ball as well. Nice pass over to McAlevey. Yeah, good situation. Actually, a risky move by Hiller in a way. He dodged when he had the extra man, but the guy came out on him aggressively, and he actually made a smart move, although be, albeit risky. See the ball moving around the perimeter for UMass right here. It goes to Hiller. Here comes his defenseman. He just tucks it, uses the defenseman's momentum to get by him, passes cross cage to McAlevey, who just quick sticks it in past Palin. <laughs> Looks like one foot in the crease, but it was after the ball was in, so it's good. 7-2. 26th goal of the year for Jim McAlevey, and now another one of those face-offs. Syracuse has been dominating so far. Schimmel, the regular face-off man, in there again this time for UMass. And let's see, it is scooped by Schimmel. He is hit. The ball taken by the Orangemen. Kirk Pratt is hammered by McAlevey, creating a turnover, and McAlevey's got it. And there's a good check. good check from behind. McAlevey gets the loose ball, though. It'll stay in. Palem will get there. And both players fall. Palem able to get up and get rid of it. The ride by the Minutemen, but Syracuse, oh. ooh, having trouble, almost turning it over to Gancy in front of the net. And now the net is still open. Hiller, Palem gets back, and Palem makes the save on Hiller. The ball's still loose. Oh. McAlevey oh. takes a shot. Oh. It goes wide. And it will go to Syracuse. What action in front of the Syracuse Whoa. net. Good riding by UMass in that sequence. Excellent job. They needed the goal, though. They had to get that goal. It was a tough one. <laughs> Lots of action. Here's, a, just here's the flurry right here. Ball squirts loose on the clear. I think it comes up. Goes to Hiller. Just bounces to Hiller right here. Hiller has a couple of steps to take in. Shoots on Palin. Palin makes a save. It was a nice shot. Nice save. Rebound. Ooh. Oh, my what goodness. an effort by McAlevey. <laughs> I thought he got pushed from behind. He got pushed from his own man. Syracuse on the clear here. And quickly, Jerry DiLorenzo is warming up the backup goaltender for Syracuse. I wonder if maybe Palin got a little shaken up. He had quite a trip that time it when he got like out of the net. Looked like he was limping a little bit. You mess. Still on the trap ride. Very see, interesting. Looks like his left leg. Palem had quite an adventure after he left the net to chase down that loose ball. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Syracuse leads at 7-2. And here comes UMass now on the ride, and the pass goes quickly across the midfield line to Dan Cahey. Cahey now behind the net. Zoberti for Burns. Flag down. And there will be the call. Is it on Syracuse? They called it with... No, it's on UMass. Okay. There was no play on, apparently, because they stopped it with Burns still controlling the ball. And he won't go man down. No, it was a, it was a technical, and they didn't have okay. possession at the time. He okay. inadvertently threw the flag. Joe Bonacci is on now for the first time for the Orange Men. A midi. Freddie Amaya behind the net. He is quick. But it is slick. Amaya spins again. Loses the ball. Senator picks it up and gets it to Lacasio. Lacasio watches it go over his head as Adam Rodell has it. Now for Lacasio. Collins is open. That's the first time we've really seen, only the second time we've seen Sal make a, any kind of a long pass. That one doesn't work. Syracuse gets it right back. Get in the cage, Sal. Lacasio Lecau is hit when he comes oh, out, oh, but he oh. scoops the ball anyway and gets it up the left side for Greg Collins. He's an athlete. There's no doubt about it. 
Collins is bumped oh, coming down the sideline. Up high, and there's a flag. Collins plays on. UMass will get another chance man up. And he gets one free shot here as long as he keeps it in the box area. Collins throws it in front, and there's the flag and the penalty. Syracuse laying some lumber. They'll go man down, give UMass an opportunity. 9.30 left to go in the first half, and let's take a look at the penalty. Collins coming in, watch his whacking right up above the head. One, no, not yet, this one. No, not yet, it's coming soon. Whack, that, that one. <laughs> oh, boy. Right up under the neck by team. Steve Scaramazzino. Called for the penalty. UMass, two goals so far, both man up. See what they can do in their fourth opportunity. It's worth pointing out, though, something we mentioned in the first quarter, guys, and that is that since Syracuse has been shooting down at that rough end of the field, they don't have any goals here in the second quarter. Yep. So a chance for UMass if they can continue to capitalize on these penalty situations. McAlevey, good pass for Hiller, and he lost the ball getting ready for the shot. He was ready to pull the trigger on that. Tried to crank it up and lost it. Now he does anyway, and a fairly easy one for Palem to handle. Very easy, not a good shot. Palem's pass to midfield, Bonet. Battling with it, several players in on the battle now. Of course, valuable time ticking away on the man up situation. This is Rodell with it now for the Minutemen. He's being watched by Marichek. Rodell goes all the way deep. Now for Bonet. Look opposite. Upfield up for Hiller. The penalty is over though. Patignato tied up nicely by Mark Stouffer. And now it's McAlevey. UMass having to work awful hard there to retain possession of the ball. McAlevey having trouble as he's being closely guarded over there. Jim McNamara doing the hard work. Bonet can't handle it at midfield. Phil Schluter can't for Syracuse, but now it's finally picked up by the Orangemen. Here comes Jim Egan. In front, Schluter takes the return pass. Now it's Zoberti. Good check. Covered by Rich Mullins, the freshman, Zoberti. Spinning and is hit, and Bonet trying to get the loose ball, kicks it out. Boy, it's so tough to scoop a ground ball on the field, particularly in within that muddy the area. Line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice oh, flip. almost a nice setup for Gansey. And there's Sudan back to Gansey. It's kind of two on three right now, though, for UMass, and Gansey wisely pulls it out. Gansey in front, McAlevey. Players just slipping and falling all over the place. Senator is hit as he tries to get the ball. In front, Collins scores! Greg Collins! Great work by Hiller! Greg Collins with the quick stick shot, and it's now 7-3 to three, Syracuse. Hill of the shooter now, Hill of the feeder. Nice pass out front. Well, when we get a chance to look at that one again, we'll see how Hiller really handled that perfectly. Situation where Syracuse was making a couple of slides. Ball pops over to Hiller. Knowing that the Syracuse defense is out of position, he looked to the center, just like in basketball, found Collins cutting right to the cage. Great job. Timeout, Syracuse. The ninth goal of the again. season. Ninth goal of the season for Greg Collins. Collins, knowing he doesn't have much time with the Syracuse defense to pull a trigger, just quick sticked it, got it in, and it's only a four goal deficit now wasting, for UMass. Wasting no time. We talked about the field conditions. Maybe it's a smart move. I don't know who won the coin toss, but maybe it's a smart move that if they did, that UMass defended the sloppy end first so that in the fourth quarter when it comes down to it, that they'll be in the, uh, the dry end. Well, there's certainly been a noticeable difference, and we talked about it during that first quarter. It was seven to one Syracuse in the first quarter. In this second quarter, it's been 2 nothing UMass. So a legitimate opportunity here for UMass to get back into this one before halftime. Well, in point of fact, Syracuse hasn't scored, and it's uh, halfway through the second period. So if they can make some hay while the sun shines, so to speak, <laughs> and uh, get back into the game, and then play a smarter game when they're on that slick end of the field in the third period, uh, they'll, look at that crowd, great crowd. And they're still coming in. If you can see under underneath, they just keep... They keep coming. Look at that, that's a great shot. You see how popular lacrosse really is here at the University of Massachusetts. And that's just the far side. You've got about half as many people, or just as many on the, on the uh, near side, right below us. Yeah. 
UMass coach Dick Garber calls this Syracuse team the best offensive team he has ever seen. And keep in mind, that's coming from a guy who's now been the coach here for 36 years. There's the face-off domination by the Orangemen. If UMass can turn that around at all, I think they can really make a move. I think UMass football has won those two face-offs, haven't they? They've certainly held their own with McEwen in there. Schimmel on this one. Tough ride by Lopez, almost breaks it up, and he does break it up. Doing a great job. Gancy with a, a flip over his back. It was a little too far ahead of Cotignato, or else they might have had a two-on-two. -two. Syracuse will look to push it up right away here before they get into that trap situation. Seven minutes to go in the first half. What looked like it might have been a route early is beginning to get a little interesting. Seven to three now, Syracuse leads it. Well, now we have a situation, once again, where UMass could engineer that trap ride, and they've had some good success on that. The good hit, they've stolen the ball a couple of times. Let's see what happens here. Palem plays it over for Pat McCabe. And now a loop pass over the top goes to Jim McNamara. Good clear for Syracuse. Paul Gate gets it to Zilberti. Now to Marichek. Syracuse really avoiding that area eight to ten yards in front of the cage where all the grass is chewed up and there you see why Dumpson gets up keeps his feet and shoots wide could have been a ward there too Marichek gets the loose ball now Zilberti UMass recovers from the unsettled situation Paul Gate makes a nice turn after getting the pass but doesn't get the shot away Lopez takes it away Lopez working hard today Good pass over the midfield line to Gancy. Gancy gets around Dumpson. Now for Kane. This is Mike Kane. The legacy. The third of the Kane brothers. Barry Kane, Patrick Kane, and now Mike Kane. There'll be a Kane out of Concord, Massachusetts. He'll be a member of the Kane family on the UMass lacrosse <laughs> team for 12 straight years. Bergan. Plays it to Cotignato, or rather to Collins. He is hit from That's behind. A push. It's a great play by Cotignato, drawing that push. Knew the defense was back there. Just keep the ball in front of you. As soon as you feel that, that pressure from behind, just gave it the little... And it was Cotignato. Kind of surprised to see him out there, not on the extra man. Watch this. He knows that guy's behind him, so he's going to keep the ball in front of him and just wait for that pressure. Boom. And you see that Cotignato has that wrap on his right calf. And we have another push away from the ball. And let's see how this one's going to go. go. UMass. It is. It'll be Minutemen ball again. No flag, but UMass will get it back. Interference on that one. Off the ball. 5.03 left to go in the first half. Boy, how this thing has turned around. Well, UMass needs another couple of goals to claw back into it, though. If it's 7-5 at halftime, we have ourselves a dandy. I was going to say, if uh, UMass could get even one more, this crowd <laughs> could really start to become a factor. Ironically, the crowd was very much a factor the last time these two teams met here, two years ago. Perhaps we can tell that story if we get a chance. Sudan for the Minutemen. Being hounded. Now for Kane. He's watched by Mark Stouffer. Kane leaves Cotignato behind the net. Flips it out for Senator. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half now. UMass playing it patiently. And doing it right now without McAlevey or Hiller in there. Senator loses. And it will be scooped by Syracuse. Scaramazzino, great opportunity here for the Orangemen. In front, it goes to Marichek. And nice a save, save by Lacasio. Scaramazzino trying to pick up the loose ball, and Lacasio gets it. Oh, a terrific save by Lacasio. A long, looping pass into a crowd. Kane trying to pick it up. He hits the deck. That was a good no call there. There was no push on that. Good ride by UMass. They're causing an unsettled situation in front of the Syracuse net, but they can't get the ball loose again. McCabe, he's got some strong arms. You see him there with the defensive stick, one-handing it. Like it's a toothpick. Three on three in front. Schluter looking for Marichek, and the pass goes wide. It's staying in. No. Oh, he went oh. out of bounds to play it. Oh, 
No, he's going to give it to. He's going to. They're going to call oh, it a my. shot. Apparently, they're calling it a shot. Maracek, it appeared, knocked the ball over the line, but they're giving it to Syracuse. I'd like to see that one again. 3:35 left to go in the first half. There's Tom Maracek. This is, this is going to be Lacasio save. Watch Maracek. He's going to come in one on one. Right here, right on the corner. Look at he gives him a fake. Boom up. Sal coming big. Coming up big. The ball loose again in that chewed up, chewed up area in front of Lacasio. There is no scooping allowed down there. <laughs> <laughs> Bonacci finally gets it. This is Earl Hall. Behind the net for Zilberti. Down to three minutes to go in the half. Syracuse has not scored in this quarter. Egan. In good front, tea, pushed tea. away by Bonet. Fine defensive play. Hall gets closer, slips. The save made by Lacasio. Down to his knees to make it. Sal has been coming up big. I wonder how many, if any, quarters Syracuse has been shut out this year. <laughs> uh, probably none. <laughs> That'd be my guess. Down to 2.30 to go in the half. Well, certainly the pace is much more to the liking of the Minutemen right now. Sudan trying to beat Scaramazzino at midfield. Now he's in a crowd, has to bail out, gets it to Brett Jenks, who's on for the first time. Now for Kane. Possible opportunity here if Kane can hurry. Gonna move it. Being hounded by McNamara. Flips it behind the net for Hiller. Jenks, now to Hiller, and we have a whistle out at midfield. And... White's off sides. Yep. Ball's going over to Syracuse. UMass making an error at midfield. Somebody stepped over the line. And it will be Syracuse ball. Boy, you kind of had the feeling that... And timeout for UMass. You kind of had the feeling there, Augie, that... UMass might have been going to try and control the ball for the rest of the half to try and make sure they didn't end up any worse than four goals down at halftime. That's what I thought. I thought they were going to call a timeout and kind of get themselves together and go for it. But uh, someone stepped off sides and it was off camera and out of my line of vision. Seven to three, Syracuse leads it. Timeout on the field, a minute 50 left to go in the half. We'll be back. A reminder that this copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by the University of Massachusetts solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the University of Massachusetts is prohibited. Doug Brown here at Alumni Stadium in Amherst along with Steve August and Steve Glover who has uh, made his way out of the booth and is down toward field level and we'll be hearing from him down there shortly. The man on crutches there is... One of the co-captains for the Minutemen, Chris Zuzai, who was injured prior to the season and uh, will not play again. Kind of an unfortunate thing. We've talked about it earlier in the year. Reconstructive knee surgery, be a year and a half of rehabilitation. It's too bad because he's a great athlete. The odd thing is, Steve, the way the whole thing happened, it happened in a practice. Basically, all Chris did was plant his foot, getting ready to take off, and the knee just blew out on him. Well, it happens, and it's sad when it does, especially to such a nice guy and a, a good talent. Very articulate man, Chris Dusai. Well, here come the Orangemen once again. After the offside against UMass, Gary Gate in front, the shot blocked by Lacasio, and a goal on the rebound by Maracek. Well, if it isn't one, it's the other, and that time it was Maracek after Lacasio went low to make a fine save. Well, that's too bad for UMass. So it's a matter of just not putting the people down in the crease area. Here you see Gate actually powering a shot off um, under enormous pressure. Got a check right there, went down. Going down, he still got his shot off. Sal comes up with a save, but gives up a rebound, and uh, Maracek was all alone in front, scooping it up and triggering it in. Well, so much for Syracuse being shut out in a quarter. Still, I don't think many teams have held him to a goal or even two goals in a quarter. Well, we talked before the break about how critical that offside error might have been for UMass, and it cost them right away. 
Eight to three, Syracuse. Josh Schimmel and Kirk Pratt again on the face-off duel, and Pratt wins another one. Well, I'd go back to the football strategy. Get the big guy in there. This is Gary Gate. Rodney Dumpson coming on now as Pratt leaves after the faceoff. Gate looking for a call. Not going to get one. 45 seconds to go in the half. Gary Gate with the ball. That was Paul trying to set a thinking about setting yeah. a screen. Yeah, they worked that once already in reverse. Quick slide by UMass. Oh, and a nice double team on Gary Gate, and Lopez takes it away. Gary Gate gets it right back, though. He stays with it. He is just such an outstanding athlete. They're down to 20 seconds left to go in the half now. This is Paul Gate for Zoberti, trying to get inside for a shot. He is hammered, and a flag, two flags are down. And it will be an extra man situation for Syracuse, I'm sure, as Zoberti was decked a couple a of times. A lot of debris on the field on that yes. one. <laughs> Hankies everywhere. It's a slash. One minute. And interesting situation right here. Syracuse with 13 seconds left in the half. They have an opportunity to work the ball around, get a shot. Or if they get a shot within the first 13 seconds and then retain possession of the ball, they'll begin the second half without a faceoff and with the ball. Zoberti really did a nice job drawing that contact because he just took it into the dungeon right there in front of the net. And about three UMass players converged on it. This is Dumpson with it. And he's looking right at the scoreboard clock at the other end of the field behind the net. And it appears that Syracuse hold will it. hold yep. and take the ball and the man up to start the second half. So that'll do it. The first 30 minutes in the book here at Alumni Stadium on what has turned into a pretty nice day here in Western Massachusetts. Syracuse leads UMass 8-3. to three. We'll be back. Eight to three, Syracuse leads UMass here at halftime. Doug Brown along with Steve August up here in the booth and Steve Glover down on the field. We'll be going down to him in just a moment. But uh, Augie, the, the Orangemen picked up a very important goal there in the last two minutes of the first half when UMass appeared to be kind of taking over with the tempo. Well, I still think UMass has kind of taken over with the tempo. But uh, it was a big goal for Syracuse. Rather than 7-3, it's 8-3, a five-goal bulge. It really means that UMass outscored Syracuse 2-1 in that period. And as you hinted, there are very few quarters where, where Syracuse has probably been held to one or zero goals. We talked earlier about uh, the other co-captain along with Sal Ocasio for the UMass Minutemen. He's been injured all season uh, after a preseason knee injury. That's Chris Zuzai, and he's down on the field now with our Steve Glover. Steve? I'm here. I'm, I'm down here with Chris Zuzai, senior co-captain, who unfortunately you injured your knee early in the season. It was before the spring training. How, how's the knee to date? Uh, it's sore, but... Uh... It's coming around day by day. Just take it day by day, and I start our rehab on Monday. Rehab on Monday, and you went down to you were down in New York to get it. Yeah, I operate in Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. All right, uh, tough first quarter for for UMass. Syracuse came out flying, but second quarter came out strong. Got back in this game. What's it? You've been on the sidelines. What's it feeling like on the sideline? Well, uh, I tell you, this is kind of team, Syracuse is kind of team you can't get any track meet with. You know, you got to try and control the tempo, and uh, that way you control the game. They're uh, you know they got a lot of firepower on offense. If you don't slow them down they're gonna murder you so we're trying to slow them down and uh, see what we're gonna do you want to slow them down okay what's what's up for you as far as uh next year you, you have a year left of eligibility what what's gonna happen yeah well i'm gonna take my eligibility uh, red shirt get the eligibility back and uh see how the knees come along in the fall and make my decision then whether i'll play next spring all right i hope the knee feels better it's tough as far as footing on the on the field today it's been very slippery we talked about how the first quarter uh, on this on this side of the field has been very slippery. What they have here is it's a it's a cleat cleaner that a lot of the kids is, as they come off the field they've been using, and hopefully and the, during the fourth quarter, uh, UMass will have possession on the on the dry side and we'll see what can happen. We're going to put it back up to the booth, back up to Doug and Steve. All right, gloves. Thanks very much, and thanks to Chris Zuzai as well. Well, a long uh, road for rehabilitation, but hopefully he will be able to come back and play again. Well, he's a great kid. He, he really adds a lot to the UMass team. He was one of the fastest minis they had. 
uh, Sudan being one of the others. But but Chris last year, I, we we hit on uh, Chris's talents a couple times. He he was a very good ball player. This is the last game of the regular season. The next stop for both of these teams, the NCAA tournament, eight to three. Syracuse leads it. We'll be back. Back here at halftime, just a couple of minutes to go before the second half gets underway. UMass will have to get off to a, a quick start here in this half to make sure things don't get out of hand uh, again with they've, uh, where they've been able to control this thing on a five-goal basis. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of the highlights from the first half, Steve. Uh, in the first quarter, Syracuse just got out flying, and they scored six goals within about nine and a half minutes. There was one by Gary Gate, his 40th of the year. Well, Gate shows on this goal why he has that patented uh, ac actual steamer of a shot right here and uh, you see him make one quick move and just fire it from 17 18 yards overhand Sal who's a very quick goalie you know had no chance on that that made it five to nothing at the time it eventually went to six to nothing then UMass got on the board and in the second quarter they put two more on the board here was their most recent goal Greg Collins but a great feed also from Scott Hiller well it was an extra man situation and uh, Gancy had the ball tossed it over to actually I think it went in in tight and kind of bounced to Hiller as you see right here drew a little bit of a slide McAlevey got the ball McAlevey was looking to feed tries to hit a cutter it pops in the air and Hiller comes up with it sees Collins cutting right there quick sticks it far side of the cage and it's in that made it seven to three Syracuse added the late goal right before the end of the half to make that halftime margin of eight to three and a look at the numbers and well, the one that jumps right out is still the face-off number. Face-offs are killing you, Mass, and that's a possession every time you lose a, lose a face-off. See, the shots are 20 to 13. Uh, Sal uh, with seven saves, Palin with five. And the man-up success for UMass, two out of three. Um, geez, Luis, uh, Syracuse hasn't got out the extra man, according to our stats. And now that I think about it, this is the first one right here. That's right. And that's why it doesn't show up uh, since it's not complete. This will be the first one, the penalty that was called uh, right before the end of the half. And actually, I guess you could point to that as one positive sign for UMass. They've stayed out of the penalty box, but right now is a real, uh, a real test for them as they open up a man down and already trailing 8-3. to three. Zoberti in front, Paul Gate shooting high. And I think Lucasio got a piece of it. He's upset at himself that he didn't stop it. On the good side of the field, Syracuse goes to work here. Right. So well, this quarter will be critical. Yeah, big quarter. I mean, if UMass can hang tight, hang tight with them throughout the third quarter, play a smart game offensively, and keep the ball away from Syracuse, Zusai should be a coach. I mean, he understands the game plan perfectly. <laughs> and the turnover is Greg Burns is unable to handle it, and a big break for UMass. Get and a possible, in the box. possible opportunity here. Hiller, that releases the penalty. Don't dodge. And Hiller wisely takes Steve August's advice. But he gets checked anyway. Dumps it off nicely for Collins. And McAlevey can't handle it. It's over the end line. But they did release the penalty, and they did get the ball at the other end of the field. Well, Syracuse 0 for 1 on extra man now. And UMass 2 for 3, which is uh, helping them stay in this one. Well, they really needed to hang on to possession there. You know, on this end of the field, you saw, again, Syracuse is coming out to play defense on UMass in the good footing also. I guess assuming that, hey, we might as well go play him where we can stand up too and maybe take the ball away. <laughs> Palem has the ball for Syracuse. He's been out there the whole game, as has Lucasio, but for a short time in the first quarter, Jerry DiLorenzo, who's an outstanding uh, goaltender, calling him a backup is <laughs> somewhat of a misnomer. He's a high school All-American, and on many teams he'd be playing. We'll take a look from behind Sal Lucasio now in the UMass cage as Syracuse comes toward you on the attack. Gary Gate getting double teamed. Here comes a triple team. The ball loose. Very unsettled if someone from Syracuse can pick it up. Finally, Paul Gate does. And he walks in front and scores. Paul Gate. Well, you can almost see that coming, uh, Steve. The ball was loose in front. UMass never really recovered. And Paul Gate just went one on one. Oh, it was sloppy from the get go on that one for UMass. Uh, good double, triple, quadruple team by the UMass defense on Gary Gate, but they have to come up with a ball after that situation. Here we see the tail end of the play. Paul Gate had come up with a loose ball. Couple stick fakes, did not go behind the cage with it. 
controls the defense long enough to get a left-handed shot off, beat Sal between the pipe. Paul Gate gets his second goal of the game, 29th of the season, and that gives Syracuse their six-goal lead back that they had late in the first quarter. Steve Glover has rejoined us in the booth from his duties at field level. It's exciting down there. It's a sunny day. We're up underneath the enclosed area, the press box. It's hot down there. And you can hear me. I'm all out of breath running up the, <laughs> st up the stands. It's a long walk from field level. Up oh, from behind, I think. And more hitting going on at midfield, and the Gorillas over there getting into it as well. <laughs> Gorilla wants to play. He's a former uh, draftee of the New England Blazers, the Gorilla. <laughs> Can't reveal his identity, of course. No. Nope. <laughs> I thought we that was Walt Cataldo underneath that Gorilla suit. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I know, he's bigger than both of us put together. The ball will go to UMass. And remember, UMass going on offense in this third quarter at the chewed up end of the field. Coach Desco using a little verbiage. That's Roy Simmons right there, Roy Simmons Jr. We're going to get somebody hurt on it. Why is that okay? Probably talking about all the contact over on the far side of the field with no call. Good job. Good job by our camera people. Roy Simmons the third, the next generation, is also one of the assistant coaches for his dad. And Coach Desco's brother, Dave Desco, member of the New England Blazers and the Brian Lacrosse Club, former captain at Syracuse. Dave's in the stands here today. I saw him earlier with his parents. This is Brett Jenks, number three, with it for UMass. Very quick. Dumps it off for Hiller. Now behind the net, McAlevey. This is the pace that UMass wants to play it, particularly running the offense at this end of the field. They've got to be very careful that they don't turn the ball over and create a Syracuse break. McAlevey beats his man in front. A save by Palem. Oh, a save by Palem on Brett Jenks, who cut beautifully toward the net. Crease violation. Couldn't stop himself from sliding in there on that one. Good setup, though, by McAlevey after he beat his man. Here you see the play. McAlevey working his defenseman close to the crease. Guy goes down, cross cage pass. Jenks trying to quick stick it in. You see him tiptoeing through the crease. Couldn't hold himself up. Played almost three minutes in the third quarter. Syracuse leads it 9-3. to 27-1 record over two years. Not too many losses on his record. UMass going back in their zone defense, looking to, to jump him right at the midfield line. Syracuse averaging almost 18 goals a game for the season. UMass is right up there, too. They scored a lot of goals early in their trip to California. Here come the Minutemen. Adam Rodell bails out at midfield for Senator. Pretty tough ride out near midfield by Syracuse. Now they drop back. Very aggressive. Sudan comes on the field and takes the ball now. Dave Avedon getting ready to check in. He comes on replacing Senator. Here's Hiller. He likes this low post move. In front, Sudan scores! Tim Sudan with a nice low shot. That never got more than six inches off the ground, and it's 9-4. to four. Hiller with his third assist of the afternoon. Sudan using the screen to get the shot through. Good shot. He likes it. You see Tim Sudan watching up, marching off. Here's Scott Hiller posting up his man. As Doug said, he likes this kind of offense. Post up, post up, back in. He's a big guy, six feet, 180. Sees Sudan up top, spring free as he drew the double. Sudan just lets a hard shot go low. Nice, Beats Palin. Nice one-handed dump. Very nice. 9-4 ball game. The face-off again is won by Syracuse. It was again Schimmel against Pratt. Schimmel for UMass, Pratt for Syracuse. Roy Simmons said that Kirk Pratt really came into his own in the Brown game here on Nesson. He played very well, and he's played well ever since. In front, possible chance for Burns, but it's tapped away. Marichek gets it behind the net. For Zilberti. Way back up high to Rodney Dumpson. 
Dumpson one on one, turns in front. The quick shot flips over the net. It was taken by Burns, and we have a flag down on the far side. That's a slash. Well, one thing UMass cannot afford is trips to the penalty box. No, especially on the dry end of the field here. But they stopped them last time. Syracuse 0 for 1 on the extra man situations. 10.30 to go in the third quarter. Clubs, what, what, what does Syracuse have to do on this extra man here? I mean, they have so many sticks and weapons back Put there. it in the cage, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, they get so many sticks. Like we said, the first seven goals from seven different scores, so there's so many ways they can hurt you. Yeah. You just get a lot of quick ball movement. Get UMass defense to slide out. <coughs> Let's look at Dick Garber in his 36th season as head coach here at UMass. He's coached many teams here at UMass, not just lacrosse over the years. In front, Gary Gate hit the post. May have been the crossbar. He shot up high. Bounced straight back out, but Syracuse has to go almost back to midfield to chase it. Boy, did he fire that one. It was moving. Sure did, almost uprooted the post. This is Zoberti behind the net. Zoberti not really challenged near there. Now he comes out. This is Paul Gate to Gary. Rodney Dumpson behind the net, Zoberti. They watch him this time. Back out front quickly to Paul. The dodge, the move, and a save by Lacasio. And it looked like he might have been hit in the crease. The ball was picked up. A flag goes down. And it's going to be on Syracuse, I believe. John Zoberti was the guy who got the loose ball and took the shot. But that no, penalty. It's not on Syracuse. It was a late hit or a hold on UMass there. Boy, it looked like somebody used a stick on Lacasio when he had the ball in the crease. Watch Sal. Sal will be down and out. He'll just have one hand and he'll hold the stick up. Watch his face dodge. Everybody thinks Gates going to shoot from up there. He comes in. Saul waiting for it. Now watch watch what happens here. Kuzo is oh called my. for the penalty number 27. Right who's here. right in front of the right net here. now. Bang. Illegal Ooh. check. Just a little bit high. So Chris so. Kuzo goes off. So UMass will be down two for uh, maybe two or three seconds here. I think that first foul almost expired. Actually one second and now it's out. So now they'll be down for 59. Rodell gets back into the play quickly. Paul Gate fires, saved by Lacasio, and he quickly flips it out. Get goes, the release. Goes into the attack area. Watch out. Scott Hiller is there, but he can't pick it up. Mark that, Stouffer. That, that was it. interference right there. A break for Syracuse, but the pass goes too far for Burns and over the sideline. It'll be UMass ball. Oh, critical turnover, and Sal Lacasio is really fired up. Trying to get his teammates into it, and he's also appealing to the referee for a call on something. Lucasio all the way over to the near sideline to talk to the officials. Sal is fired up. He's the captain. He's the leader. He's going to rally the troops. He gets mad out there. It keeps the defense on their toes. Syracuse coach Roy Simmons has said UMass is Sal Lucasio. An indicator of how important he feels the goalkeeper is. This is Rodell playing keep away from Zoberti. Gets it to Lacasio. Down to 15 seconds to go on that penalty to Cuzo. And UMass doing a good job keeping the ball away. And Lacasio bails it out downfield. Quickly back come the Minutemen. Or rather the Orange Men. Penalty just about up. Behind the net, it's Zoberti. The penalty is now over. Cuzo coming back on the field. Sudan gets the ball, spins away nicely, and avoids nice. another hit, and here comes Tim Sudan, as UMass has killed off the penalties. He's got some legs. He sure up and does. Down the field. He's been a workhorse today, too, hasn't he? McAlevey now. McAlevey watched by Jim McNamara, who's played a fine game on defense for Syracuse. Halfway through the third period. One goal for each team here in the third. Nine to four. Syracuse leads it. Hiller. They want to keep Hiller out high. In front. McAlevey scores. Hiller from way out top oh, finds hey. McAlevey in front. And it's nine to five now. Four assists for Scott Hiller on the afternoon. I was about to say they looked like they were purposely trying to push him farther out to keep him away from making a good pass. Absolutely. 
McAlevey just hanging out on the edge of the crease. Here you see Scott Hiller again, just like Doug pointed out earlier, in that post-up position, protects the ball so well, it's tough to get a check-in on him, and just waits for somebody to pop free. And McAlevey with a behind-the-back whooping newer. I don't know, Gloves, what do you call that kind of shot? <laughs> First tally, I don't know what you want to call it. Behind the back, call it a goal. It's 9-5, Mass coming back. McAlevey's second goal of the game, 27th on the season, and as Steve August said, the fourth assist on five UMass goals for Scott Hiller, and they've got it again. McAlevey. Dumps it off. Bergan. The place is buzzing a little bit here. Uh, you can tell they're ready to explode if UMass gets another one. Gansey in front. Hiller can't handle it. Hiller does a nice job using the body to get it back. Now McAlevey. The flag. flag is down against Syracuse. McAlevey in front and his shot goes wide. He falls into the crease. He was hit from behind. But there'll be a penalty against Syracuse. It's a Mac attack. He's taking it to the cage. You saw him and right around the corner. Here you see him all muddy. Mac attack taking it right strong to the cage. What all good attackmen need to do. Taking that extra step. See him stinging a little bit. Took some punishment for that, but he took the extra step. Sure did. The penalty is going to be on Pat McCabe, it appears, number 29. Here's Hiller getting rid of the ball, and nice, here's a late hit, pushing him off to the side. Late hit Worse on the head. Hit. And watch McAlevey, here's what I like about him. Watch him take the extra step. A lot of guys would shoot there. He takes it again, one more step, and he gets, pays, he, <laughs> pays the price. He, he did pay the price. There you see the extra man stats. Syracuse 0 for 3, surprisingly, and UMass at 50%, now with their fifth opportunity of the afternoon. UMass hasn't been within three goals since 3 0. They could put one here, they could get right back in it. Mike Kane, number 32, feeds McAlevey. It's Kane, McAlevey, Hiller, Collins, Cotignato, and Sudan. This is Kane. For McAlevey, try to pass in front. It was knocked down. UMass gets it back. A fortunate bounce. McAlevey for Kane. Down low, Sudan. Whips a pass back to McAlevey. Good defense by Syracuse right here. They're playing it tough. They're coming all the way out near the restraining line. 6.20 to go in the third quarter. 9-5 to five, Syracuse. Sudan fakes. And the pass back to Sudan from McAlevey is too high, but the Ground will slow it down, and Kane chases it. Scott Hiller must have been shaken up on that last uh, sequence. Watch Sudan shooting high, and it goes off Palem and over the end line. Good chance for UMass, but what I was saying, uh, Hiller's usually on this extra man team. He must have been shaken up. The penalty, by the way, oh, just ended. McCabe is out of the box. Do you see him? There he is. He's back on the field. But he wasn't out there on the extra man unit. Far side. Syracuse back at full strength. I made an error. First one this year. No, that's not. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Bergan making a fine move, and the shot is blocked. Didn't even get to the goalie. Chance for Syracuse now after that blocked shot. This is Schluter. He's done this a couple of times. In front, another long stick trying to get a shot. Scaramazzino can't, and now Lacasio has it. UMass has played quite well here in this third quarter. They've continued that momentum that they had in the second quarter. And keep in mind, it's so critical for them to stay within striking distance because UMass will be shooting at the good end of the field, if there is a good end, in the fourth quarter. This field has taken quite a bit of rain in the last 24 hours, but it's actually in amazing condition when you consider the rain that has fallen. We had a brief shower about a... 30 or 45 second shower about an hour before game time. Well, how about that? That fast, U, uh, fast Syracuse start, and since then, it's been a UMass game. John Gonzalez is number 12 for the Minutemen. Dumps it off to Bergan. In front, Lopez scores! Tyler! Oh, look! Chris Tyler! And it's now 9 to 6. I'll tell you, UMass. UMass has gotten Syracuse in a situation they haven't been in in weeks in a tight game. That's exactly what it is. Great cut. We saw it happening. We weren't sure whether... Uh, <laughs> I was about to yell, Tyler's open. Yeah. He was cutting across the middle. 
Bergen was handling the ball. See the ball go over to Bergen right here. Defense was well spread out. Here's Jimmy Bergen. Bergen looking in, and in the right-hand corner of the, the screen, there you see Tyler had cut to the cage. Bergen hit him with a pass, perfect, right on the money, and Tyler was in flight, happily knowing the goal was in the cage. Syracuse wins the faceoff. Here comes Paul Gate charging the crease. He's hit from behind, gets it back. In front. Knocked away, and Lacasio has it. UMass has scored the last three goals to cut the lead to three. I tell you, Chris Tyler, he just not, doesn't get all the notoriety, but in the last four years watching UMass, he's come up with some big games, big goals in the big games. That was his 10th goal of the season, Bergen with the assist, and this is Bergen again. In front, watch out, Gonzalez, and he is hit. He can't get the shot away. The ball loose and now covered. Withheld from play. There'll be a face-off. It's in the muck. I tell you, the momentum looks to be <laughs> UMass right now. It's going to be their ball. UMass winning this third quarter right now, 3-1. to one. Just look at the shots. UMass, seven shots in this in this second quarter, making the most of them. Keep in mind that of the 15 goals scored in the game, only five have been scored down at this end, the muddier end of the field, and UMass has three of those five in this quarter. McAlevey. The big crowd is a buzz. Here comes McAlevey, he's got a step, he comes out front, and the shot is partially blocked. Another good defensive play by Syracuse. In the corner. No one can get it. Tyler digs for it. Takes the man out, and Gonzalez can't hold on to it. He kicked it over the line. Couldn't believe it. It's a tough one. Gonzalez trying so hard. So hard. We just saw him. Someone, we missed it about a couple minutes ago. Gonzalez hustling back on the defensive end. Just giving it, giving it his all. You see he's a little dejected. Kick the ball out. Heck of a game so far. Well, they've climbed quite a hill just to get back within three. You wonder if UMass has enough to climb all the way. They've got the crowd with them, certainly, and it is a large crowd here at Alumni Stadium. I'd say probably nine to 10,000 anyway, maybe more. Fred Amaya with Dan Cahey playing catch for Syracuse. Now to Zilberti behind the net. This is Maracek. Back for Amaya. No isolation. Amaya with the great speed. He's not very big, but he is so quick. And a bad pass. Cahey over toward the far side. It slows down on the grass. Maracek able to pick it up, but he's immediately Hit, double team, the ball goes over the line, it'll go to Syracuse. Good ground ball work by Syracuse right there. Down to 2.29 to go in the third quarter, 9-6 to six Syracuse. You notice the ball's been staying in, you see the ball going out. Here's a look at the crowd, but the ball go, looks like it's going out. So wet and the grass is so high, the ball's staying in. People are just getting a spot to stand anywhere they can now because the, uh, the stands on that far side are pretty much filled from end line to end line. Everybody enjoying the sunshine here in Amherst. Paul Gate. Watch out. This is Mark Hotailing making his first appearance on attack for Syracuse, number 13. Gary Gate, he's watched by Chris Cuzo. Gets a pick. Pick and roll to his brother and the shot goes wide. Lacasio trying to hustle out of the cage, <laughs> but uh, Syracuse was back there and they'll keep possession. Constant motion, Sal Lacasio. Oh, an animated goalie. He's one of the most exciting players we've covered in the last four or five years. We started four years ago. It's our first year. Sal was a freshman there, all American, his freshman year. This is Gary Gate. Syracuse seemingly slowing it down here, which is somewhat of a surprise. Down to a minute and a half to go in the quarter. 
Now for Dumpson. Dumpson, nice move. In front, it goes to Zoberti, and he was hit just as he took the shot by Adam Rodell. And the steal by Cuzo in the corner. Nice outlet pass, it comes to Lopez. Fast break UMass style. Now to Hiller, he waits, spins, in front, and he passes blocked. Hiller still battling. Knocks it to an open area, picks it up, and his pass is intercepted. He was looking for Collins out front. Sudan joins the battle. Now Hiller. Hiller dumps it over the top. Gancy absorbs the hit. Gets rid of it, though. Sudan. Double team. Spins oh, away. Oh. Watch out. Sudan. In front. The shot is blocked. Senator really never got it away. And it goes over the end line. Palem hustling to save the ball for Syracuse. Some good action. How about Timmy Sudan? That nice little roll dodge. Looked like he was going to get a Syracuse sandwich. He got one, Let's I watch think, it. didn't he? Watch, watch Sudan pick this up. Two Syracuse guys coming in. Right here, he's going to get cr crunched. Boom, comes through. Went through three guys. It's UMass ball. Oof. Good check there by number 18 for Syracuse. Jim McNamara saved the goal. Sudan down to 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. This is McAlevey. They should hold it out for the last shot of the period. And right. You'll hear the crowd really give them a hand at the end of this period. 15 seconds to go in the period. Nine to six, Syracuse. This is Collins in front, Gancy, and he can't control the ball. It's still loose in front. Nobody can get to it. Down to three seconds to go, two, one, and that'll do it. The third quarter is over, and here's the applause from this big crowd at Alumni Stadium. The UMass Minutemen have work to do, but they've pulled back into it. It's nine to six, Syracuse. We'll take a break and come back from the fourth for the fourth quarter. Don't go away. Six, Syracuse leads UMass just seconds away from the start of the fourth and final quarter here at Alumni Stadium in Amherst. One of the thousands of fans here in Amherst ready for this one. She's got her own gorilla. She's a little gorilla. <laughs> a gorilla. It'll be Josh Schimmel for UMass and Kirk Pratt once again on the faceoff to start the fourth quarter as you get a look at some of the fans who have gathered here. And they're seeing a great game of college lacrosse, the final game of the regular season for both of these teams. The gates close in from the center. Cuzo fighting for the ball for UMass. And it's picked up by McNamara for Syracuse. He dumps it out quickly. This is Pratt. Pratt now gets off the field. Zoberti behind the net. Keep in mind now that, again, the teams have changed ends, and Syracuse is now operating at the very muddy end of the field. Only five of the 15 goals in the game have been scored at this end, and there's a save by Lacasio on Paul Gate. And he goes hustling down behind the net. And let's see what the call will be. It's going to be a push called on Lacasio, I believe. It'll go to Syracuse. No Big possession. save by Sal. Coming up. It's crunch time. It's fourth quarter. Let's take a look at his save. You're going to see Gates going to be far side. Up high. Sal shutting him off. Gary Gate now behind the net. He has Marichek out front. Marichek being hammered by Tom Bonet. In front, Dumpson shot saved down low by Locasio that time, and it goes over the end line. Syracuse will get it back, down to 14.06. Syracuse working much closer to the crease in this period. Here's Gary Gate, he's in front, but he missed the net. Locasio can't get the ball on the dive, Marichek has it. In front, the ball loose. And scoop to Lacasio, and he's able to cover it. What is going on out there? <laughs> Lacasio gets it back. Syracuse running a very tough ride here right now. Let's we'll see how UMass handles it. This is Adam Rodell with it. 
Midfield is going to come down and give him some help. That's right. Greg Burns on Rodell. He plays it back to Lacasio. And Lacasio finally tries the longer pass upfield. Lacasio's got a little stopwatch in his, in his head and knows exactly <laughs> when four seconds because he holds it. Here's Hiller. Syracuse is back defensively. Hiller with four assists on the day. Hiller turns and the shot goes wide. He had McAlevey at the corner of the cage. He turned looking for number 100. It'll be UMass ball as McAlevey hustled to the corner to cover it. 9-6. Every possession at this point in the game becomes critical. Play back on. McAlevey outside for Sudan. For Senator. Senator, Sudan, and Collins at the midfield. Hiller, McAlevey, and Gancy at attack for UMass. And Hiller gets hit. Check. The ball's still loose. Gancy joins the fray with Senator. It goes out of bounds, and it will be UMass ball. Attack is such a fun position. Attack is definitely the best position. So Gancy and McAlevey, both of them were hanging out down by the goal, just waiting for that ball to squirt loose. A lot of times it happens. It's, it's an easy one. Sudan resets now. Sudan working on Scaramazzino, beats There's him with a head of speed, and there'll be a flag on Scaramazzino. He got the stick up high on Sudan, and that was all created by the quick start, that quick first step by Sudan. Sudan yeah, so, great speed. Yeah, so quick, got right by him. And Scaramazzino is no slowpoke either. <laughs> Here you go, you see Timmy Sudan wind it up, little double kick start. <laughs> Scaramazzino just got behind him and then uh, got the hooker in there for a minute. Well, what an opportunity for UMass. They couldn't ask for a better situation than this. 12.27 to go, down by three, and now they've got a one-minute man-up situation. Kane is out there now in midfield on the extra man. Cotignato is out as well. McAlevey. Sudan now for Kane. Back to Sudan, now McAlevey working in close for Hiller, he's wide open for the yeah. shot, he scores! Scott Hiller! Number 100! Nobody even moved on him! No, he just corked it! Took a couple of steps and let it fly! Assist from Sudan! Well, I guess Hiller deserved a goal because he'd had four assists already, that's his first goal of the day. And the crowd erupts! Wow. Look at him go. Here you see it. Patient extra man by UMass here. Ball goes point behind. Right up to Hiller. Takes a one, two, three. He knew he was shooting that one all the way, and he just blew it by Palin. Going to be Syracuse ball now is off the faceoff. There was a pushing violation. Playing the hidden ball trick here. Now 11.59 left to go. The Gate Brothers playing hidden ball over here. As you see, they're just huddling. This is an old box trick, box lacrosse. UMass wisely watching to see who ends up getting the ball. Who is it? It's Gary, and it's knocked loose by Kuzo, and then his pass goes too low for Marichek. Marichek gets it, though. Behind the net, Zilberti. In front, this is Paul Gate. He spins, but he turns right into Mario Lopez. That's interference on Syracuse. Ball's going UMass. Good call. Number 14 for Syracuse. Got in the way. That last goal was UMass's third extra man goal of the day in six opportunities. So they're hitting at 50%. And you got to keep in mind that Syracuse was only allowing 20% extra man success on the season coming into this game. Not only that, but Syracuse is 0 for 3 on the extra man themselves, and they have been hitting 50% for the season on extra man. Anything over, I always say, anything over 30% extra man, and you're really hitting. So the special teams for UMass have really been critical. There was a push at midfield as. Schluter knocked down Sudan, but play on is the call, and Syracuse has it. Down to 11 minutes left to go. Syracuse leads 9-7. to seven. They have led all the way, but they led twice by six goals. The lead is now down to two. Marichek. 
Gets it off to Earl Hall. Zoberti out deep for Dan Cahey. Fred Amaya is out there also now at midi for Syracuse. Zoberti around a screen by Marichek, comes in front, gets it back to Marichek. The spin and the low shot is covered by Locasio. As Marichek was double teamed and barely able to get the shot away. UMass defense closing in tough. Sal, QB of the clear. Are they going to let him bring it up this time? Well, that's a wise move by Syracuse. Because and Syracuse uh, coming out with a 10 man ride. Yeah. And Sal what? will pick it apart. Watch Sal. Oh, it's a little too long pass, Lacasio, but it's over the sideline as McAlevey tried to save it. How about this statistic, gentlemen? Since they went to a 7 to 1 lead, Syracuse, late in the first quarter. UMass has held the Orangemen to just two goals in the last 36 minutes of play. Probably the longest dry spell of the year for Syracuse. The fewest goals Syracuse has scored in a game this year was 10 in their 10 to 9 win over Towson. And that really was their only other very close call of the year. There were other games in which they were challenged and had to come from behind, but they ended up winning most of them quite easily. In fact, Syracuse was playing really their best lacrosse of the year coming into this one. Their last four games, a win over Hobart in which they blew the game open in the fourth quarter, a win over Cornell when they really blew that one open in the first half. Then against Rutgers, they trailed 4-2 to two in the first quarter and exploded for 17 goals over the remainder of the half to blow that one open. Watch out for Paul Gate. He shoots wide. It'll still be Syracuse ball. And then, of course, we've already talked about the game immediately previous to this one for Syracuse, the 22-1 blowout over Penn. That, that's an amazing score. 20 to nothing before Penn even got on the board. And Penn is a good team. Syracuse still with it. Dumpson, Rodney Dumpson slips, able to regain his footing as the defensive man slipped momentarily as well. Down to 9.20 to play. Gary Gate goes around a screen by Brother Paul, fires and scores! Oh, what a shot! What a shot by Gary Gate! He went right into the upper corner over the left shoulder of Sal Lacasio. Nothing Sal could do. That was a cannon, and it was right, I mean, we'll see on the replay. That was right in the top shelf corner. Watch it, you see just Gate just moving strong. A stick in the left hand, no secrets. He's not gonna do anything different. Stick in the left hand, he's just gonna power strong right through that dodge. Now watch it, watch the stick over here, coming in. Ooh. Oh, right off the inside pipe. I don't think there was an eighth inch on either side of the ball between the crossbar and the side pipe. Second goal of the day for Gary Gate, 41st of the season. And more importantly, it gives Syracuse a little breathing room here with 9.19 to go in the game. 10 to seven, Orangeman. UMass has got to start winning some face-offs. Not this time, it's Schluter for Syracuse. And this is exactly the situation Syracuse likes. Right off the draw, Schluter and Lacasio with the save. That's why Syracuse is so dangerous. Schluter with the defensive stick, given the nice sidearm crank. Got some steam on that shot. Rodell. Plays it upfield. UMass quickly now. Gonzalez trying to regain the loose ball. He can't. And the Minutemen go barreling in as Tyler was in on the play. Still a battle. It's just so tough to pick up the ground ball that it just stays on the ground. Gancy now finally with it. Eight and a half minutes to go. Gancy into the area. Plays it behind the net. McAlevey will be able to get there. Up front, Sudan. Bothered by Scaramazzino now for Hiller. Scott Hiller with a goal and four assists on the day. Hiller looking for more. Spinning. Goes deep. Out front. The shot scores! Tyler, another one! Off a broken play, started by Scott Hiller. <laughs> Good backup. He knew it was a smart move to just pound it right back at the goalie because the goalie was looking for the pass and the quick stick. Tyler. Big game, big goal. 
Makes it a two goal game again. Palem not happy with himself on that one. Understandably, he was looking to see the quick stick come right off the edge of the crease. Here you see Hiller working the ball. He takes it all the way behind. Right here, point behind. It was really intended to right. We couldn't get the number, but Tyler with the screen just fired it right back. Nice pick Caleb up. didn't have a shot at that one. 12-1-4-3. Is that another assist for Hiller? Yes. No. The ball uh, hit the ball hit the ground? They could score that in assist. I, I'll give it to him. <laughs> We'd give it to him. I'll give it to him. 10 to 8, 750 to go. Syracuse with the ball. The crowd just loving every minute of this. A crowd of 12,143. Bigger than the crowd here two years ago. 12,143. We talked about it, having it, whether it was going to be at Boyden or the. Or here, there'd be a big crowd at Boyden. Watch out. Quick shot over the shoulder. Great save by Lacasio as Greg Burns picked up the loose ball and just fired it behind his head. Saw Lacasio being at the right place at the right time. I think that hit him more than he made the save. Watch out, though. The attack is not over yet. Gary Gate has it. In front, shot, hit the side of the net. As Burns had another opportunity. And there's a flag down. And he's going off. The Syracuse player is going off. That was a slash. UMass player down. I believe it's Tony Bonet. It is. Oh, and if this is a penalty indeed on Syracuse, what an opportunity for the Minutemen. 7-0-1 the play. They trail by two. Gate is going off. He's too good a player for that. He really, he really chopped down on that one. Here's the uh, quick shot and the save. Burns picks it up. Burns, knowing where the goal was. Great job. All attack, but no, all good attack, but know where the goal is. He just turned around and fired it. Timeout. Cuse. I, I believe, okay. Or UMass. I believe UMass called that one. With 7.01 to go and about to go on the man up situation, here's your basic uh, turning point right here, I guess you could say. That score, 10-8. Who'd have thought? Pawtucket Red Sox baseball continues on Nesson Friday night, May 12th, live at 7 o'clock from McCoy Stadium in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, as Carlos Quintana, Kevin Romine, and the rest of the Paw Sox try to get untracked against the Denver Zephyrs, one of the best nicknames in professional sports. That's Pawtucket against Denver, Friday night, May the 12th, at 7 o'clock, live here on Nesson. And they're working on Tom Bonet over on the UMass bench. Oh, no, that isn't Bonet. It is Mario Lopez. Lopez done a great job at midfield D today. Denver, they're in the International League, huh? Boy, what a, an ironic turn of events now as opposed to two years ago. We talked about the big crowd of more than 11,000 here two years ago when these two teams played. It almost turned into a home field disadvantage for UMass. We'll pick that up in a second. But there are the rankings going into the uh, final week of the regular season. Johns Hopkins and Syracuse have been in that number one and two spot. North Carolina getting into the top four after suffering those three early losses. I tell you, Massachusetts could move right up, especially with a win. And then the rest of the top 15. Look at Brown and Yale. Brown, we talked about that, uh, that three game losing streak they had where they lost a lot of games. They were right back in it because they've been winning on the Ivy League. And those teams down at the bottom of the top 15 there, of course, on the bubble, only 12 teams go to the NCAA tournament. All right, UMass, man up. Less than seven minutes to go in the game. It's 10 to eight, Syracuse. The Orangemen at one time in the first quarter led this game six to nothing. We'll set the extra man unit for UMass. McAlevey gets it in. Sudan, wide open, scores! Tim Sudan, it's 10 to nine. Making it a one goal game. Timmy Sudan pulling the face dodge right across. And coming in and firing it by Palom. And they're getting excited at UMass. Hat trick for Tim Sudan. He's the first player on either team to have three today. We have ourselves a ball game. Extra man. Again, extra man for UMass. Fourth goal of the afternoon. Timmy Sudan faking the shot here. Going around the defenseman. Again, a risky move in the extra man situation, but bouncing a shot by Palem, who had committed himself. 
Again, Syracuse wins the faceoff, but there is an offside call on UMass. So it'll go to Syracuse anyway. 6.35 now left to go. Regulation time. 10 to 9, Syracuse leads. What an incredible comeback this has been for the Minutemen. And now you almost have to say, guys, that regardless of what happens in the final outcome, what a great confidence builder for UMass going into the tournament. They know they can play with the best of them. Here comes Gary Gate. He's one of the best. In front, the shot blocked by Lacasio as Burns fired it. Zilberti has it back for Gary Gate. For Marichek, he's pushed deep. Now Zilberti whips a pass out front. The long shot by Paul Gate is blocked. Rodell has it. Paul Gate is right on him. Rodell dumps it out nicely. Mullins plays it to Lacasio and listen to the crowd. Bonet will start it up the near side. Timmy Sudan. 5.45 to play. UMass looking for the equalizer. This place will erupt if they tie it up. Not that it hasn't already. Hiller in that post-up position. Looking. Still looking. UMass player falls in front. Hiller takes the shot and it's blocked as Palem guards the post and he does a nice job scooping the loose ball. But Syracuse can't handle the breakout pass. Sudan has it momentarily. McAlevey and Sudan run into each other. And an unfortunate break there for UMass because they might have had control. Schluter now for Burns. Marichek. Back for Burns, down to 4.50 to play. 10 to nine, Syracuse. Zilberti watched by the freshman Mullins. Marichek. For Zilberti. Syracuse really slowing it down here. Somewhat surprising because this is not their game in spite of the fact that they might be trying to kill some clock. Especially at the muddy end of the field. Marichek out front. This is Earl Hall. Senator gives him a little room. Every possession is big at this point. We said it before, but now in a one goal game, possession of the ball is incredibly important. Goaltending could be the difference. Salakas has come up with some big saves. Palum on the other side just as well. Here's Hall. Well, the question is will it be a good defensive play or an offensive mistake by Syracuse? And now the Orange men call a timeout after holding the ball for well over a minute. 3.52 left to go in regulation time. Syracuse leads it 10 to 9. Started to talk about the scenario here two years ago when uh, there were 11,000 plus people here and it actually turned into a disadvantage for UMass because oranges were thrown on the field and it was never determined for certain whether it was definitely UMass fans throwing the oranges because as you'll recall, a couple of years ago they had a problem at the Carrier Dome at basketball games with Syracuse fans throwing oranges and they had a problem with oranges being thrown on the field here two years ago and they kept calling unsportsmanlike penalty, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on UMass. Right. Four times it was called during the game and four times Syracuse was able to uh, get an extra man goal and they came from behind in the first half and eventually won it easily. So the, the strategy would be if you're in a Syracuse fan late in the game, toss those oranges out. I guess so, <laughs> I guess so. Well that, that was the big beef by UMass uh, fans and the UMass coaching staff was, hey, how do you know that it's UMass fans throwing the oranges? And the referees were saying, well, and I, and I guess to a certain extent you have to assume that was the case, but there were an awful lot of Syracuse fans here, we understand, two years ago. We haven't really heard them too much today, but they're heavily outnumbered. Well, it's hazardous. <laughs> Talking to uh, some of the Syracuse fans out in the parking lot before the game, could be hazardous to your health. This is 12,143. Big Could be hazardous, hazardous to your health. I guess in one of the games, a couple people threw oranges. Syracuse players picked it up. They got the stick. They can throw, throw a ball pretty fine, fast. I guess they were throwing them back at the fans. Well, interestingly, in the student paper here in Amherst this week, there were editorials printed 
encouraging students, of course, to come to the game, but not to throw objects onto the field. They wanted to stress that to make sure it didn't happen again. Well, they haven't had oranges in the dining column commons for the last four <laughs> weeks. But what I started to say earlier is how ironic that with no oranges or anything else being thrown on the field, that it's the, that's Uma the UMass extra man unit that's kept them in the game. In front, Gary Gate with the shot, and it goes wide. It'll still be Syracuse ball. It's going to be a scary looking <laughs> picture Sorry. sitting in a goal and having Gary Gate about 10 yards from you throwing the ball at over, probably over 100 miles an hour. Before the game, I asked Sal if he slept well last night or if he was dreaming about all these guys coming after him. He said, well, he said, I slept okay till about 7.30, but that was about it. <laughs> Tough after that, he said. In front, and a quick shot and a save by Lacasio on Joe Bonacci after the setup from Paul Gate behind the net. Oh, what a great opportunity that was for Bonacci. Syracuse is going into a press ride right here. They're going to come right at UMass. Syracuse controlled the ball for almost two minutes in that sequence, but now UMass has it back, and boy, they almost have to take advantage of this because if Syracuse gets it back again, they could go into that stall formation. Syracuse leads by one. It's 10 to nine. We're down to 245 left to play in the game. Lacasio will retreat. Using, using his, his crease. Just got the warning from the goaltender to move the ball up. Now to Brett Jenks. Plays it back for Rodell. Up to the middle, Tyler, nicely for Sudan. Juggles, but hangs on. He's watched by Scaramazzino, and UMass can set it up now. McAlevey. Good Over clear. For, for Hiller. Sudan, Gonzalez, and Tyler Good at midfield, check. and a nice check on Hiller, and it's taken away by oh. Syracuse. Mark Stouffer almost lost, but Palin gets it back. Stouffer with the original check on Hiller to knock that ball loose. Jancy was coming around the cage clean if he picked that off. Now 1.55 to go. Rob Persing dumps it off. In front, Gary Gate shoots, and it goes wide. It'll still be Syracuse ball, as Gate had a great setup that time. I think Saul might have got a little bit of stick on that. Well, here's the situation. You have a minute 45 left in the game. Syracuse, you see uh, Cuse coming down on the break. Let's see if, see if Saul gets a, a, a stick on it. You're going to see Gate. Gate's going to crank it right from this position right here, coming in. Watch. Ah, he might have. Back to the action now. This is Gary Gate, gets a screen from Paul, fires, and it goes wide, and I believe Lacasio did get a piece of that one. So Gary Gate is all of the offense here, it appears, for Syracuse. Lacasio keeping his team active. It'll still be Syracuse ball, 1.33 to go. It's going to have to take a great defensive play or a save and a hold for Lacasio in order for UMass to get the ball back. So Birdie goes around a screen behind the net. Gary Gate again. Watched by Cuzo, Chris Cuzo. 110 left in the game. So Birdie, watched by Tom Bonet with the long stick. Syracuse in no hurry. So Birdie just kind Bonet's of forcing Bonet more. to come play him. He's got to go after him harder than that. Down in the final minute now, 55 seconds to go. Zoberti is just ball. hanging there. They have to go double the ball, UMass. Zoberti. Now here comes the double team. Zoberti finally gets rid of it to an open area. It's Maracek. 35 seconds to go. Syracuse will not shoot. You can be certain of that. Not at this point. Zoberti. UMass has to do something and make something happen here quickly. 20 seconds to play. He's out of the box. That's it. Ball goes to UMass with 18 oh, seconds oh, left in the game. Oh, wow. Oh. He took about six inches. Marichek, he just stepped outside the box. 18 seconds left. I believe UMass wants a timeout. They you do. Yep. Dick Garber wants a timeout to talk about it on the UMass bench. 18 seconds to play but UMass has to go 80 yards against the number two team in the country and then score in 18 seconds. Ooh, that's a <laughs> pretty tall order. 
All it takes is one shot. Stay tuned. You know, you take a shot in this, Gloves knows this as well as anybody. You take a shot in this situation, it could fall, right? Yeah. Pressure's on the goalie, not the shooter. Yeah, I say uh, give the ball to Lacasio. Let him shoot. Let him, let him give the 80-yard pass, have some kind of pick and roll play off the corner. So when he passes it, he's passing to an area. And that man is picking, you have two attackmen picking on the far side and have Sal make the 80-yard pass, catch the, catch the ball, dodge the man, score the goal, and go to overtime. Guys, do you think this is more Syracuse maybe relaxing a little bit after piling up that big lead, or has UMass just taken it away and Syracuse hasn't been able to get it back? I think UMass has done one heck of a job taking control of the tempo of this game and clawing back into it one goal at a time. It's great poise. Good job of adjustments on the, on the part of the coaching staff. I think their defense stopped oversliding and just hung tough and said, let's not get beat one-on-one. -on -one. I had a very interesting conversation last night uh, with Dick Garber and asked him about how big an upset would this be if UMass beat Syracuse? Because all we've been hearing about Syracuse all year long is how great they are and how many weapons, and all of that is certainly true. But UMass is the sixth-ranked team in the country, and you don't become that unless you played some pretty good lacrosse. You betcha. Maybe this isn't as much of an upset as a lot of people might have led, been led to believe. It's, it's a good thought. I never really thought it that way. But for UMass, hey, they're 11-1. And, and since, since Syracuse took a 6-0 lead, UMass has outscored them 9-4. Here we go, 18 seconds left. UMass has a long distance to cover. They give it to the long pass man, that's Lacasio. He gets it to Tyler, now to Jenks. They're in shape here for a possible shot if they can continue Eight to seconds. advance down hurry. to six. Sudan better hurry. Four He's seconds. looking right at the clock. He fires, oh. saved by Palem and it's over. The game is over. Tim Sudan had the final shot with two seconds left. Palem makes the save. I don't know if the shot might have been wide anyway. And that, Ends the ball game, 10 to nine, Syracuse hangs on. What a game. Came up big. There should be a great round of applause for both of these teams from this crowd of more than 12,000. What a game they saw here today. And most, many of them didn't even see when Syracuse piled up the early lead. That's All they right. saw was the UMass comeback. We'll take a break and come back and wrap it up from Amherst. 10 to nine, Syracuse wins it. Well, gentlemen, I think this is the kind of a game that each team can go away feeling pretty good. They can each take something away from it. Syracuse got their offense going in the first quarter, built up a big lead. And then UMass, of course, uh, with the big comeback, staying with one of the top teams in the country. But yet Syracuse still gets the win. They have that uh, knowledge, extending their winning streak to 11 in a row, finishing the regular season. And yet they also got some more experience in what actually turned out to be a tournament type of game. So this might be the ideal kind of tune-up for Syracuse. Actually, with UMass, UMass might even move up to the top four and get a bye to having such a close game with Syracuse. Syracuse ranked two second nationally. They could move up to, to four and get a bye or get the home, home field advantage. Well, definitely. It was a good show for UMass. They came back. They were down 6 nothing. They showed a lot of poise. They really should carry a lot of momentum into the playoffs and should be a good playoff team. Again, if you missed it earlier, Syracuse went up to a 6 nothing lead in the first quarter. Then UMass finally got on the board. And then slowly but surely, starting in the second quarter particularly, they took over the tempo of this game. And then in the fourth, uh, late third and early fourth quarter, they really get back into it, making it 10-9 to on Tim Sudan's goal with 6.40 to play. And then it was up to Sudan to take the final shot. And there it is, going high. With one second left, if it went in, it would have been overtime. Great try, UMass had a, came out strong after getting down to a six nothing deficit, came back strong, outscored them nine to four. Just a little bit too little, too late. Very balanced scoring for Syracuse as usual. Gary Gate had a couple of goals. In fact, he was the only orange man with more than one goal. For UMass, the big scoring hero on that side, uh, certainly Scott Hiller, who had officially or unofficially, I should say, one goal and four assists, but he was just in it all day. And uh, the extra man special teams uh, play on both sides of the ball really were critical for UMass. 
Well, UMass did a great job on extra man scoring four goals. And also killing off the uh, attempts for Syracuse. Remember, Syracuse Absolutely. was hitting 50% on extra man coming in, and they didn't right. get any extra man goals today. All right, quick prediction from each of you two guys. Uh, NCAA tournament coming up. It's been Hopkins and Syracuse one and two in that order all year long. They haven't met since the first game of the season. What do you think going into the tournament? Well, I think uh, Syracuse showed some vulnerability here today, and uh, this could work for them or against them. You know, they might kick themselves in the fanny and say, hey, let's not get caught like that again, or they may really truly be vulnerable. But I'll go with Syracuse. Okay. I'm going off the board. I'm going for the dark horse. Massachusetts. Ooh. I'm going to go for you, Mass. <laughs> Playing to the hometown fans. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they've really had a, a tremendous year, just, you know, and they proved today that they can play with the top teams in the nation. So it'll, be, it'll definitely be an upset, but I'm going to take UMass. Well, the final records then, UMass winds up 12-2, and two, breaking a nine-game winning streak. But as Steve Glover mentioned a moment ago, they may not lose that number six ranking, and they may even move up a notch or two. For Syracuse, they wind up 11-1 and one with an 11-game winning streak after losing their opener to Johns Hopkins, and they'll be uh, the second seed, undoubtedly, uh, with a first-round bye for the NCAA tournament. Well, this being our final college lacrosse telecast of the season, there are certainly an awful lot of folks we want to thank, so just a moment while we pay uh, homage to the people who help us put these broadcasts on the air. First of all, the coaches uh, of all the teams involved, the many players who are so willing to cooperate with us during the course of the season, all the sports information staffs that give us all the uh, terrific information and keep us up to date on all the teams. From Nesson, uh, our producer, John Vassallo, our director, Rose Marakian, our associate producer, Tom McNeely, associate director up here in the booth, Pat Cavanaugh, who also uh, does stats for us and does an outstanding job, and then the rest of our lacrosse crew here on Nesson. You'll see the names uh, a little bit later on, but they do a great job, and, boy, we had a great one to go out on, didn't we? <laughs> sure did. We also want to uh, uh, thank everybody uh, for joining us during the season. Of course, during our telecast, we had some uh, outstanding lacrosse games, several one-goal games, including this one uh, here today featuring two NCAA tournament teams. And a thanks uh, also, of course, to my two partners up in the booth, both of whom are here for this one, former UNH All-American and now attackman for the New England Blazers, Steve Glover, and New England Blazers general manager and Brian lacrosse player, Steve August. Thanks both, gentlemen, for your help and uh, and it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed Thank it. Thank you, Doug. It's been a great year. We enjoyed it. We look to see you next year. We That's certainly right. want to wish both of these teams well as they head into the NCAA tournament. Uh, the final four will be played at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County at Bird Stadium on the final weekend of this month of May. That'll about do it for Steve Glover and Steve August and our entire Nesson crew. Doug Brown saying once again the final score from Alumni Stadium in Amherst, Syracuse 10 and UMass 9. Today's game has been brought to you by Brian Lacrosse Equipment, the choice of champions. Ask for Brian. The 1989 Big East Baseball Tournament comes your way live on Nesson Tuesday, May 15th through Thursday, May 18th from Muzzy Field in Bristol, Connecticut. Catch doubleheader action each day beginning at 1 o'clock. If necessary, there'll be a championship game on Friday, May 19th at 12 noon. That's the best of Big East Baseball. It's tournament time live on Nesson. College Lacrosse has been an exclusive presentation of Nesson, your New England Sports Network. We deliver.